It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, uh, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Um, Andrew, how are you, sir? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I saw you traveling. Bro, I went to Aspen. White people figured it out, bro. What happened? They just figured it out. What do you mean? They just figured it out, bro. They know what to do. These billionaires just figured out how to live. Where'd you go? To Aspen, Colorado. It's just a mountain, tiny little town where like billionaires push out the millionaires. I had no business being there. Everything mad expensive, just in the middle of nature. And just white people whiting, bro. I hike. Yeah, my, my book agent, uh, my book agent Jan owns a house out there. She's been trying to get me to come out there for a while. You'll be that's some get out shit. You better be careful of that. Go there with wax. Um, a lot of people go to Aspen though. Yeah, black and white. I've been hearing about Aspen for years, especially when they when it when it's when it snows up there. Is it? It don't snow year round, do it? No, no, no. But I didn't yeah, see yeah, anybody yeah. that wasn't white. I mean, really? I saw people that weren't white, like working. Probably because <laughs> I didn't of see the anybody that wasn't white relaxing. <laughs> nah, probably because of the season. You actually kind of late on Aspen. A lot of people have been going to Aspen for years. Yeah, black I and mean, white. It was in the movie Dumb and Dumber. Oh, I didn't know but, that. Know yeah, that. of course. Like, but uh, the the thing with Aspen is interesting. Is like, um, they say at least that the billionaires push out the millionaires. Like, so when we were going there, there was a line of private jets, and there's so many private jets that were parked at the smaller airport that was there that mm -hmm. some of the rich motherfuckers that were coming there had to stop and veil and drive because there wasn't any room for their private jets to land. How crazy is that? Oh yeah, that's how the Caribbean is in the, around New Year's. Really, For the holidays? Hell yeah! You go to like, you know, I love going to Anguilla, Anguilla, or Turks, or Saint Bart's. Those places like that. Yeah, the, the little tiny airports there be filled with PJs. Yeah, and and and, and you know it's all the the, the, the big dogs because when you drive by the airport, you'll see like the Puma jet or mm. the, the Nike jet or the you know what I'm saying like. You you know who's on the island based off what 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 corporate jet is there? Yeah, so they take the corporate jet on that private vacation. You see how they do it? You see how they write shit off, Charlemagne? You see how the I mean, rich stay there. rich? It's, it's there. See how the rich stay shit? Yeah, but it's not. It's for work. If you're the CEO, mm. it's yours, baby. It's how the rich stay rich, Charla. But nah, um, yeah, the week was good. How about you, uh, man? What'd you get into? I was at the house, um, like I've been for the past. You need to go outside, bro. Since fucking March. I'm starting to get worried about you. I don't think you've left the house in four months, and I think it's. I'm gonna be honest with you. What's crazy? I don't even know if I. I don't know how I would be around people at this point. <laughs> Probably how you always have been, just wildly inappropriate <laughs> and somehow I, charming at the same time. Probably, <laughs> probably, 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 like because a, a lot of that is defense mechanisms, right? Right. Yeah. So it's like it's like. Uh, I don't know how my social anxiety would be. I've left the house one time when I went to South Carolina for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I've been playing the crib. Yeah, I enjoy it, though. I'm at the point now where all I want to do is make my house, like my primary place of residence, everything I want it to be. But aren't you moving? Yeah. So the new spot is the one that you're trying to make it. I mean, this my new spot is, my, my spot I'm in now is like that. But the new spot is really going to be like, I really don't have to leave if I don't want to. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, I think the past four or five months has even changed things um, professionally, right? Because a lot of the things that we do, they really don't require us to be any goddamn place. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, my, my, my world is, is literature and audio, you know, mm. some TV every now and then. But I don't have to go no fucking where. Do you feel like, <laughs> like the quality has reduced, though? Very much so. That's the thing. Like, I think it's better. Much so. I think we're better when we're in the same room. I think we're, yeah. made, we're different than a lot of other people where, like, we've been doing this so long, we can do it over Zoom, but the energy's still I different when you're in a room, man. I, I hate the Zoom. I hate yeah. Zoom interviews. I hate watching shit on TV that, that's Zoomed the fuck out. Like, it's over, bro. Mm. Put the fucking mask on. Get your hand sanitizer. Get your hand sanitizer and, and you know, pull up. Pull up to a studio and do what the fuck it is. Well, come to the to studio then, man. Put your money where your mouth is. As soon as they say it's safe to come back to iHeart Studios, then I'll come um, to the Brilliant Native Studios. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm going to start building yeah, it right that. now. 
I'm gonna start I, building I, I, it right now. Listen, let's get into um positively brilliant and what a fucking idiot. What did you see this week that was positively brilliant? What did you see that made you say what a fucking idiot, Schultz? Um, I think what I saw this week that was positively brilliant. Um, but at the same time, what a fucking idiot. Um, was this a DNC? Did you watch any of the Democratic National Convention? I watched the first night. Uh, had to turn it off last night. It's, it was just too fucking it's boring. It's so boring, bro. It's unbelievably boring. It's, Cause I, it's old. You know why? Because it's old and white. And that's not what the Democrats should be at this point. I don't know like, if that's why it's boring. I just think that's it's, exactly why it's boring. Don't 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 you stand up for your team. And I'm not talking about Democrats. I'm talking about whiteness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like it's, it's old and bro, white. Listen, you know how much black people love old white shit? <laughs> we don't. Oh, yeah. Y'all know. Y'all don't fuck with the Godfather. Yeah, probably not. Nope. Yeah, yeah, y'all probably was, don't fuck with the Godfather, was, huh? Y'all don't fuck new, with was, that. Them old white people Jack are boring, City. huh? Was, them old white people are whack and boring, I, huh? Okay. I, I was, I was Let's look at them rap City. album covers before we no, decide who the don't fuck with the that's, Godfather. That's, that's, that's Scarface. Scarface was the was the hip hop shit. You saying that God the Godfather did not influence albums? Not like not like Scarface. Come on. Not like Scarface. Come on, Shaw. You nah, crazy right there. there. Jay Z's Reasonable old, Doubt that? album. He's on the front, fronting like yeah. he's Italian. Yeah, but that, I think that was because that was. Scarface is Cuban, bro. Oh, don't get me wrong. Hold on, don't get me wrong. The mafia, the mafia definitely influenced hip hop. That's old that's, white that's, people. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's but old white Scar, people. Scarface, the movie, was, was so influential in hip hop. That's, that's an old Jay-Z white person, said. too. Al Pacino, old white. Yo, old white people, bro. Aspen. Aspen influences hip hop, dog. Real talk. That's where the uh, culture gets its influences from. But well, nobody likes old white politicians. But tell me why nobody why you likes thought the any DNC politicians. I mean, Michelle Obama spoke, right? Everybody's talking about that. She's not old and white. She's the best. That's what I mean, though. That's a perfect example, right? You got a headliner, right? If I'm a let's look at it like let's look at it like a comedy show. Oh, right? I know what, what the fucking idiot was. Sorry, I know what what a fucking idiot was. But what? It was Beto O'Rourke said that uh, Donald Trump is the most racist president in history. There are presidents that have owned that? people. Yeah. Literally well, jo- owned well, human beings. Well, Joe Biden said that a couple of weeks ago. That's why I gave him donkey of the day for the exact same reason. I didn't even hear Beto O'Rourke say that. But um, Michelle is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. If you got Michelle Obama headlining, Michelle Obama represents pretty much the newness of the Democratic Party. Like the last time the Democratic Party was really cool and people really fucked with it was when the Obamas were in the White House, right? So you got Michelle Obama headlining. So why not have Keisha Lance Bottom speaking and Stacey Abrams and AOC, like your young, young AOC stars. AOC spoke yesterday. Yeah, for 60 seconds on a night that Jill Biden headlined. That's literally like yeah, but a you going know to why. That, that's like going to a comedy show where Dave, like Dave Chappelle or somebody edgy is the headliner. But you got like, I don't fucking know who's somebody clean cut. In Jim, the Jim Gaffigan. I don't Jim's clean. Oh, yeah. Crystal. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. But see, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's the, that, it should have been somebody that reflects the headliner is what I'm saying. Yo, so I really wonder what year. Minorities are going to start to learn that the Democratic Party, not certain politicians within it, but the Democratic Party, the system that is the Democratic Party, doesn't give a fuck about them. I understand AOC cares. I understand Keisha Lance Bottom cares. I understand Stacey Abrams cares. But the people who pull the strings in that party are not putting them in the powerful positions. AOC's earning hers. You get, Regardless if you like if you like her or not, but regardless of her pocket, she is earning her spotlight. And I got to give you know it up why? to her for that. You know why? Because AOC knows how to... She knows the game, bro. She knows how to play politics, but then she also knows how to stay in good with her base. That's why, even though it was procedure yesterday to do what she did, mm-hmm. she stood on the fact I want, hey, I endorse Bernie Sanders as president. But I'm going to vote for Joe, and I'm going to campaign for Joe. Mm-hmm. But I'm endorsing Bernie Sanders as president. That goes so far with her base, even though that's part of the procedure of the whole DNC convention anyway. Yeah. But it still keeps her in good favor and makes her look like a leader for the future. But by the way, that is the Democrats' leaders of the future. Like those aren't the people who got next. We'll see. Those are the pe- those are the people who got now. We'll see. 
I, I think, think the, so. I think the party, the party line is going to do what the party does. And as long as the party has power and they're in control, they're going to keep on uplifting those figures within the party that uh, do exactly what they're told. And that's why they don't fuck with Bernie, because he don't do what he's told. And they won't fuck with AOC because she doesn't do what she's told. And they will keep supporting the people that do what they're told. Like Kamala does and, what she's it's told. It's kind of it's kind of hard to say Bernie doesn't do it do what he's told. Well, he kind of does. He a little now, soft. He, 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 def, he, he definitely does. Yeah, he it's very tucks hard his to, tail. Because he hasn't made any, con- he hasn't, he, he, they haven't made enough concessions to Bernie. They're not leaning in the progressive, yeah, leftist views. Yeah, you no, know what you're I'm right. saying? Like, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sure he's been promised a place in the administration. I don't know if you they'll know give I mean? him a place, but maybe they will. Maybe you're right. I'm just, yeah, you're right they about got, Bernie. Listen, Bernie they, likes they, to they, front like he's a rebel, but he doesn't want to tussle when it gets down to it. He's not willing got, to be in the trenches. Exactly. And they got him leading task force, and it's not like he has. Radicals like Senator Nina Turner on his task force, and Senator right. Nina Turner was somebody that's rolled with him during both of his presidential cycles. So yeah. I can't, and, and, and he's, she's not on the task force because they told him we don't want Nina on the task force because Nina said some wild shit about Joe. Well, not not some wild shit, but wrote an op ed about Joe telling the truth about Joe mm-hmm. back in January. So I can't sit here and say he doesn't tell what he's told, do what he's told. Right. All politicians fall in line, they all told a party line at some point. Yeah, or the line of their supporters, or the line of their supporters, Either or you or redefine, side. or you redefine the line. I think that's what we're hoping that new politicians haven't seen one do. do it yet. I mean, I think Trump definitely did it for Republicans. Like he flipped yeah, that whole shit. The, you the, might his, not. His, his line is like this, a little squiggly. Like, you can't a little. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. Like, you can't. You can't even follow his line. Yeah. Do you, and do you want? Do you want that line? Yeah, exactly. No, you don't want that line, but he did redefine it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. He redefined Republican thinking. So to me, that gives- And not in a good way, though. Regardless of whether it's a good way or a bad way, right? It might not be the way- that that matters. To me, it's not- It matters, of course, on our everyday life. What I'm saying in terms of politics- when I see that, I go, oh, shit, that means a new type of Democrat can come in and redefine what Democrats are. Like that, me. What I'm going is, oh shit! It's possible to come from outside the political system and then redefine the system you're in. And I guess I'm hoping that a new Democrat can do that in the same way, or a new centrist, ideally, can do that in a way. Someone who could really kind of bring both sides back to the middle a little bit because they went too far right and too far left. I think when it's all said and done, Donald Trump gets thrown all the way under the bus. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, by for those sure. by those by those same Republicans who seem to be falling in line now. Because at the end of the day, none of them are going to sacrifice the party for one for one individual. And, you know, John Kasich said some ill shit on CNN the other night. Oh, and that was actually one of the most profound things I've ever heard a politician say. John Kasich said, um, what did he say? I'm not mad. He said, he said, he said, he said, the party is my vehicle. But it's not my master. Right. And I think I think that makes a lot of sense. Like the party can be your vehicle. But don't let it be your master. Like if you have been a politician and you've been a Republican or a Democrat and that's the vehicle you've used to you know, navigate your, your way through your career and where you are now, fine. If, even if it shaped your values, fine. Just don't let it be your master. And Because when you see something that's wrong and the, that, that vehicle is being driven by somebody that's taking you in the wrong direction, mm. somebody got to be smart enough to step outside of the car and say, whoa, wait a minute. Right. What are we doing? Right. And nah, that's, that makes you know, sense. That's, that's, why, that's why John Kasich spoke at the goddamn DNC <laughs> and, and not the RNC. Right. So, hey. Yeah. Um, another thing I saw uh, that, make, that made me say, uh, what a fucking idiot, is John... John, how do you pronounce his last name, Taylor? Uh, <laughs> Falk. Or... John Falk. Falk mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> John Falk is a radio broadcaster for the Charlotte Hornets. Right. Uh, the other day, he tweeted out, Shot making in this jazz niggers game is awesome. Murray and Mitchell going back and forth. What a game. Now, he didn't mean to say that. It's kind of wild, bro. Auto-correct. <laughs> That's, autocorrect. Hey, that's how do you Tim autocorrect? Cook. How does Nuggets turn to niggers? Listen, I don't know. You got to ask Tim <laughs> Cook about that shit. But for real, dude, that's on Apple. That's on Apple, Android. Someone threw an M word in that fucking tweet, bro. He said he said something that was interesting. He said that um, he takes full responsibility, right? Why? I'm not taking full responsibility for my smartphone, bro. Let me tell you something. 
I haven't, but if I ever do say the N word, I don't take responsibility for that. Not, not, not in a tweet. Not, not any time. Even if I say it now, I didn't say it. Oh, what? you don't have to worry about that. If you no. say it now, it, if it came out, it wasn't me. Who was it? You. Well, you better. Hey, you better hope the camera's not rolling and this audio not rolling. <laughs> hey, first of all, I've never said it. I don't know how the fuck we've talked this much. I mean, hours and hours a week, and it's never even been slipped out. But if it does slip out, <laughs> yeah, I didn't nah, say it. But if you say it in a tweet, <laughs> I'm just saying. But the they, U this, is next to the I. I, I was that. Photoshop. No, first of all, Taylor, the U is not. Is the U next to the I? Yes. On the, but it's it's not the N word. It's Nuggets. It's Nuggets, Taylor. N u g g e t s. No, I know that, but I'm saying. Oh, but it, it, maybe he spelled N i g g e t s. Bro, if you spell N u Nuggets, the N word, the N word ain't popping up, bro. If he was trying to spell nickel, maybe N i, <laughs> it didn't quite. Now you gonna make me type this I word know, into my fucking it. phone, bro? <laughs> Wait, ain't no <laughs> Nuggets. If you type in Nuggets, ain't no. There's no way N i g g e r s is coming up, man. No, yeah. I'm not my, saying it's. Oh, the, he's saying it's coming up because I'm saying that you, if he's while he's typing it and he's typing it fast. Oh, man, Yo, he, I'll be he, honest but, with you. Why does it even let us type the N word? That's it. fucked up. Doesn't. I just typed it right now. It typed it? in my phone. Really? Yeah, really? but the red, the Rex. They the don't even let you say behind. fuck. Doesn't it switch it to duck? Yeah. Duck. No, you could say you, you can should switch it. the N word to that. You could. It should switch to I diggers. Can... They're out here digging. But doesn't the doesn't the red doesn't the red doesn't the red? What are we doing? If you go switch the word fuck to duck, why can't you switch the N word to diggers? No. You shouldn't even do that. We had this conversation. <laughs> yeah. White people shouldn't say anything that has igger in it. What about yes, Arnold Schwartz? Yes, we did have Schwartz? that conversation. You're right, we did. That's what about not Arnold Iger? Schwartz? That's, That's not, not Igger. Yeah. Arnold Schwartz? That's not Igger. No, Nager. Not Igger. Even that not. sounds crazy. I would. I don't no, even no. like. You right, know what? I don't like saying that word where like you're bothering people. That you know. You know. You know what that is. Nagging. Yeah, you're nagging someone. If you're nagging someone, you are a. Oh, a nagger. I would not even say that. Well, that's a, yeah. That's a, that's, that's too that close. Yeah, that, that's that old South Park joke. But yeah, you can't. I wouldn't even say the word. Ig, I wouldn't say anything with igger in it. Because here's the thing. What about this that guy, Charlemagne? What about this? No. My favorite type of potato chips are salt and vin. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get beat? Listen, you gonna get beat up? I'm trying to. Oh, I'm trying to. For asking you get for beat potato up. chips, Charlemagne. Yes. In this climate, you fool. Come on. I have to go with Cooler have, Ranch. Have a have a have a high emotional IQ. You know what it means to have a high emotional IQ. To not say anything that resembles the N word. Yes. To have a high emotional IQ is to understand how others may perceive something. Yes. Or, or, or take something. You got to be smart enough to know that. Like, it's, why put yourself in that position? Well, we have to get rid of all racist words then, like Karen. <laughs> Karen isn't racist. <laughs> yeah. But have you seen Karen, them? Hey, you Karen, seen them Karen, try to claim Karen, Karen, Karen's racist? <laughs> Karen's just another word for annoying. Bro, it's that's, so that's funny. That's literally what bro. it is. But it's so funny how everybody's a victim. Everybody wants their bad word that you can't say. Have you seen people it's try to claim that It's literally everybody pointing the finger. Everybody wants their own form of oppression. Of oppression, bro. And by the way, it's not only that. It's like when you were a kid in school. If you got in trouble, you wanted everybody else to get in trouble too. Like if you get in trouble, you want your brothers and sisters to get in trouble and your cousins. And well, he yeah. did it and he did it. That's what adults are doing right now. Yeah, dude. That's Sad. literally what they're doing. Sad. I will I will say that 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 Charlotte Hornets announcer though. Um they say that if you have typed the word that much in your phone, that's why it automatically pops up. Ooh. I don't believe, I, I don't I don't believe that though. Ooh. I say fuck all the time. I don't it still believe that. Changes yeah, duck. I, I write fuck all the time. It still changes it to duck. <laughs> so I don't believe that. I think either. you have to. Add yeah, I don't believe that. Dictionary. I don't believe. I've that. tried. No, I add fuck to my dictionary, and now it's. I and now it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, shit. You can put fuck in your dictionary. Yeah. But no, nah, that's weird because I've never typed the n word, but it let me type the n word. You see, DL got ran down on in for, the airport for what? Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? Keep, keep digging your grave. <laughs> <laughs> the L security had to intervene what this happened? week. This week in the airport. He got ran down on. For what? Um Angela, Angela Stanton King ran down on him and was like, Y'all wanted 
I want you to keep that same energy you be having for black Trump supporters. All that coon talk and everything else. Let me hear what you let me hear what you got to say. And what did he say? Angela's not no little woman. Yeah. Okay? What did he say? Um, he said that he told her if you're a, a, a Trump. Uh, see, that, that that was an interesting story to me too, because DL said he told her that if you are a black Trump supporter, you're absolutely a coon. She said she ran down on him and told him she wanted to uh, confront him about all the shit that he he talks, and he called his security to intervene. To me, I think they're both telling the truth. It's just two different perspectives. You know what I'm saying? He like they're both security telling the truth on a woman. That's that's who you should call the security on. Yep. Why? Because you a grown man. What you gonna do? Fight a woman? No, you could just be like, excuse me. No. No. <laughs> that's no. Not what? Gonna work. <laughs> she's big. Know. Let me Google this. Even, girl, even, even if she's not big, you know what? You, you you'll never win as a man having any type of confrontation with a woman. Whether it's verbally, whether it's physically, like, what's the point? Like, nah. To have your security intervene and say, hey, let them defuse the situation. Not you. I guess. They got to defuse it, though. I can't have, be like, sicking dudes on a woman. That just feels uncomfortable, too. No. They got a job to do. You got to defuse the situation. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable just calling four dudes to, like, manhandle a woman, bro. I mean, I didn't say manhandle. Not- See what the goddamn TMZ. I say it's not. <laughs> oh, 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 does oh it feel? God. Oh, does it feel weird to put words in people's mouth? Jesus does it feel Christ. weird? Like we didn't just do that with Jesus me for the last Christ. ten minutes? Yo, why are you sicking men on women, bro? Why are you? Why are you sicking four burly ass Scared. dudes and telling them to attack a woman, bro? The, the, the L part about it is show. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Listen, listen, listen. Schultz created a number of bodyguards that DL yeah. got. <laughs> yeah, Schultz, Schultz, I did, Schultz. bro. You All said. I said was security. Schultz said four mm-hmm. of DL's bodyguards yep. manhandled her. God yep. damn. Yeah, five white guys too. Why would you have sick five <laughs> white men on a black woman? Why would you do but, that? Uh, you should. It, there's nothing wrong with that because, like, women, women, and I'm sure this situation wouldn't have went that way. But let's not act like a woman can't walk up to you and attack you oh no i'll call the police on a woman for sure why wouldn't you in the second we start arguing and she's gonna get physical in any way i'll call the police immediately yes a hundred percent that's smart 100%. Like, get out the way like call in Matter- the police why are we Grab even going the phone through this? and run police run police Say, yo my my, my, my one one this woman is acting up she tried to attack me i'm just getting the fuck out the way mm-hmm You'll never win. Yeah, you'll, you'll never mm-hmm. win. That can never, that can never mm-hmm. go good for you as a, mm-hmm. as a, human, as a man. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else did you see that me. caused you to say, what a fucking idiot, positively brilliant? Yo, you know what I saw that was, I don't know which one it is, but that girl that says she sucked off those seven uh, basketball players all from the same what? team in a room. You didn't see that? You didn't see that, bro? No, we there's this thought that. that was on Adam 22's podcast. And like she said, once she was... She was getting fucked by this one dude who worked for the team. And then I guess he called up like the team players and they all came over and then she just sucked them off in a circle together, swallowed each nut and yeah. then went to the next one and then yep. to the next one and then to the next one. What the team Celine was that? The Powell's. Chicago Balls? <laughs> oh, the Brooklyn Nuts? What team? That's did she better. Suck Brooklyn off? Nuts is better. <laughs> what what <laughs> team did she suck off? The Utah Jizz? <laughs> The Denver, <laughs> nope. Oh, <okay. laughs> what team? What team was it? Did she say? Um, hold on. Uh, no, no, she didn't say. And everybody's trying to speculate what it was. But yo, is that? Let's have that conversation. Is that odd? What do you mean? I don't know if I'm getting head with after another dude busting a girl's mouth and she. Swallows. I don't think I'm getting ahead right away. She got to drink like a Pepsi or something like that. Like something with some carbonation to kill that sperm before I'm putting my dick back up in there. Because you can't let your dick be like squishing around in her mouth with all the other guys nut. Well, that's that's the same thing as when guys run trains. I've I've never I've always thought that was strange. Yeah, that is peculiar. But there's something about the fluid coming out, which should end it. You know what I mean? Like once fluid is out, then it's gay. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought you was about to say to me, isn't it odd that she wanted to suck seven different guys off? <laughs> but, but, yeah, but she, you put it on the dudes. Yeah, I think it's on the dudes at that point because... Really? Yeah, because if I'm a dude and there's seven girls in the room and I think all of them are hot, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to fuck all these girls. But 
if I'm a dude and there's one girl and then like six of my boys are in a room with me and they all got their dicks out and I got my dick out and then she's swallowing the nuts too. It's just, I'm not putting my dick where yeah, nut I, was. I've, I've never understood that, especially like you're a basketball player. There's no shortage of women, bro. Like I you don't t- have to ration out the, the woman. Yeah. In this was, situation. Like they all came on her though. That's why I took it. That's like. even crazier. What do you mean they all came like, on her? Like she sucked them off and then when they all of them are ready to come, they just came in. No, I don't think they timed it. That's impossible. They didn't time bro. it. That's crazy. They do that on porn. That doesn't even make no time. sense. How? Yeah, but these guys are basketball players. They're not porn stars. Okay. I mean, that, Taylor, that's... So, t- Taylor, how could you possibly believe that? Seven penises, <laughs> right? <laughs> on. One mouth. <laughs> so that means that she got everybody to climax and they no, all held their this. nut. No, 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 no. They all held their nut until the very last person was ready to come. And then they all busted off. Now, I've gotten <laughs> head before. Andrew, you've gotten head before. Uh, Taylor, yeah. you've given head before. How long does it take usually to make a guy come? I don't know. I think it really, for me, depends on her relationship with her father. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the worse that relationship, the quicker I'm able to climax. I know that has an odd correlation, but it seems to be true based on my research. This is going weird what does way. that mean? I want to explain a little bit. This guy. Yo, you see this guy right here, bro? You've been hugging too many trees, bro. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you know who hasn't know. been hugged? <laughs> the girls that give them good dick sauce. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know, I don't know anything. I'm a, I'm a innocent guy. I don't know anything. I'm there. You were supposed to be. Show me. Let us say you would say you was bog D. Bog D. Bog D. You should yeah. understand what's going on. Yeah, I thought you were bog D. Oh, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, <laughs> I'm uh, try- oh. <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, fix that stethoscope, I know, bro. Come hey, on. I, I know one thing. I know seven men didn't simultaneously buffs off on one woman. That's a fact. It was one after another, and that's <laughs> right. what makes it that's odd. I mean, but I, once that's one, put one, one, once one, one guy comes in a threesome, if there's two guys and one girl, once one guy comes, it's over. Sound to me like she owned the room. <laughs> Say what? She um, owned the room. The only she's reason performing why in I want to say that's that's what she's owning it necessarily because she's on her knees doing it to them, whereas... Wait, what is that? What did she say? What'd I'm she just say? saying, like, what? are they were they going down on her too? Like, yes, just, they did. They all ate her pussy at the same time. No, they shut up. They did. I'm just saying, I want to, I want to call her owning it as much. She's not owning it. She's getting owned. Ah, uh, it depends, bro. If you eat seven pussies in a row and they don't do nothing to you, you got owned, bro. Them pussies owned you. Or uh, maybe I like eating pussy. Yeah, yeah. And they took advantage of your joy. Because if, if if I like eating pussy, that's a buffet. Say what? <laughs> if I like eating pussy, that's a buffet. It's seven different flavors. Oh, <laughs> like, shit. If, because, if, if, and by the way, some guys do like that. Some guys really get off mm-hmm. just eating women out. So, yeah. in Little that person's guys. mind, they won. They like, yo, yeah. you wouldn't believe what happened last night. I ate seven different women out. Mm-hmm. And some girls like giving hate. Mm-hmm. That's, yo. Yo, that's true. I that's like another too, thing too, that you got to. At the same time, yo, Taylor, I'm not don't talk be about going that kind around. of stuff, yo. <laughs> Don't talk about your sexual proclivities with us. You know what I mean? But but, but where did this story end, though? She was just saying that um, she enjoyed stomach. it. She don't regret it. That's all. All right, guys. Let's take a break for a second because, you know what? I need to get you some discounts on food. I need to make your life easier. You know, you got a lot of things that you're working on right now, probably. I want you to get your meal out of the equation. Don't even think about your meal. Have DoorDash handle that for you. If you don't know what DoorDash is... It is an app that gives you direct access to your favorite restaurants and all these restaurants you don't even know about. And they're going to deliver that food right to your home. Yes. And you know what? If you go to DoorDash right now, DoorDash.com, right, and you put in the promo code IDIOTS, you're going to get $5 off your first order of $15 or more. dollars. That's right. You can get $5 off and zero delivery fees for the first month when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code IDIOTS, okay? $5 off your first order, zero delivery fees for a month when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter the code IDIOTS. Come on, guys. This is a no-brainer, right? Especially right now, you know, there's a lot of restaurants out there that need you. They're reeling. 
Okay, yeah, they might have a little outdoor seating, but it's not the same money that they were bringing in before, so they could definitely use your help. So if you want to support your favorite restaurants, if you want to get no delivery fees and you want to get some money off, you just go to DoorDash right now and take advantage, support your community, and get yourself fed, okay? Go download the DoorDash app and use that promo code IDIOTS to get that discount. Let's get back to the show. Well, boy, I'll tell you something. I really do wish these people start getting hit with major lawsuits because they go on these podcasts and they go on these platforms and they just want to go viral in a lot of these cases. Yo. Mm-hmm. They just want to, they just want to have something to talk about because motherfuckers just be saying anything and that shit becomes a story. Mm. And I don't know who to blame. I don't know whether you blame them for telling their story or talking or telling a story, or do you blame the media for printing anything? And it's not even print. It's it's that social media era of post. just being able to post anything. You just yeah. need content. Like you just run with shit. Like yeah. boom, here. This is what it is. Like, nah, that's a good point, man. Like who's that shit, responsible? That shit is dangerous, bro. It's been dangerous, but you know, who is responsible? I guess we're all a little bit responsible if we're talking about it, if we're reading it, we're enjoying it, we're indulging in it. You brought it up. You brought it up I too. Did not bring it up. Who brought it up? I think it was Joe Taylor. Brought it up. No, I did Taylor not. Brought oh. it up. Taylor brought it up. I um I don't know who's responsible <laughs> because I feel That's like you stop trying to blame me. <laughs> everybody's allowed to tell their story, right? Yeah. Like if you're a part of the story or if you have a perspective on the story, if you was there, you're allowed to tell it. Yeah, because there's always three sides. It's your Unless side, we agree the not other to tell side, the story. And then the truth. Even if you agree, you can't that stuff don't matter no more. NDAs and shit don't matter. But it should. It doesn't. It you should. know why? You know why? Because motherfuckers ain't getting hit hard enough with them lawsuits. That needs you to start on, happening. If you if you on podcast or you on the radio, like I, you, they ain't. You know what it is? A lot of these motherfuckers ain't never been sued for the shit they be chatting. So they think that they can say whatever the fuck they Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've been sued for the shit that you chatting, and you realize how easy it is to lose fucking money. Mm. That's why the word allegedly matters. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why if there's facts about a case, facts about a situation, you should be very accurate Mm. in laying those facts out because you're not allowed to have an opinion on the facts of something. Mm. You know what I mean? If the facts are there and you still choose to ignore those facts to push whatever narrative you push it, oh, you're going to get hit with that lawsuit. And oh, you're going to lose some money quite quickly. Better believe it. So so everybody just really, really, really needs to be... uh, cautious when it comes to that shit that they that they just be chatting because that shit will come back to bite you in the motherfucking ass yeah yeah like even the true. guy last week who said michael b jordan was flirting with him what is that oh, like yeah. he was he was at michael b jordan's house or something he was an assistant i don't know if he was an assistant or or something i mean so and i was just like what happened with that he was like an assistant and he was in his closet and supposedly michael b was like are we supposed to kiss right now and then that was it Wait, 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 what? Can't he just say that sarcastically? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe he didn't say it at all. No, nah, but like then, he uh, feels another part anxiety. of the story was the guy didn't have, Michael didn't have no shirt on. It's his fucking house. Yeah, why you got to be clothed in his house? <laughs> also, why are you in the closet? You probably took so much courage to come out. Shut the fuck up. And then the guy goes, I'm not trying to out anybody. But, like, Huh? I don't know, man. We just live yeah, in a very, bro. very, very, very st- also, strange like you, era. And I know you. You would think if you're a gay dude that like you went through coming out of the closet and like what that was for you and like how difficult that was. You would think that you would have some empathy for someone. Let's say hypothetically he was closeted. You think you would have some empathy for somebody in that situation. And you would. Yes. You would. If you had any tact whatsoever, you would allow them to come out when they felt comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, this dude's but, a cornball. Whoever came out and said it. But nobody cares about empathy when this thing right here is in their face. When this mm. thing right here is in their face, all they're thinking about is how can I get people to listen? What yeah. will I be able to say today that's going to make people gravitate towards me yeah. or said platform? Oh, like, I have no problem with anybody going out, sharing their story, if they feel like they're a part of the story, if they have a perspective on the story. Well, boy, if you're lying, 
I want people to start putting the full court press on motherfuckers. Yeah, I like that. So who is it? Maybe that's, that's a, on us. Maybe that's on us to start putting the press when people lie about us. I, th I think you have to, man. I, I loved when Justin Bieber immediately sued those two anonymous people. Yep. Who who who, who accused him of rape? You know what I mean? Like when you when people come out and they do stuff like that, yo, sick the lawyers on them immediately. Yo, you don't, saw don't, you saw what they did. Uh, I mean, like Hulk Hogan. Well, he was, I guess, uh, sponsored by the guy Peter Thiel, but they took out Vulture. I think it was Vulture. Maybe not Vulture. Oh, yeah, Paper yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember that. No, it, was, it wasn't Vulture. No, it was another one. What was it? Gawker. 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 And uh, Gawker. apparently the reason why the guy Peter Thiel funded that is because Gawker wrote an article way back in the day outing him. Peter Thiel is a uh, homosexual, but he was, I mm -hmm. guess, closeted at the time. Or he was private by the time, and they outed him. So he had like a vendetta against them. And then with the Hulk Hogan situation, he put all his money behind him and then shut that fucking magazine down because the lawsuit was too much. They couldn't afford to pay it. And Loki, I respect it. Who the fuck are you to tell my personal business? You know, you know who you know who should be held accountable in these situations. Who? Um, the the platforms, YouTube, Instagram. I don't buy Twitter. That. Facebook. You don't want that. You don't want that. No, I'm gonna tell you why we want that. We did. We do want that because no, every don't. other platform has to get held accountable. If I get on Breakfast Club and I say something that's not true, guess who gets sued? Yes, but I 105, iHeart, everybody. Gawker. Gawker says something that's not true. Then guess who gets sued? Right. Gawker. Gawker prints something. New York Times prints something that's not true. Guess who gets sued? New York Times. So Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, Instagram, everybody else. They got to do a better job of filtering out the lies and the bullshit. That's not freedom of speech. You, you, you can have, by the way, you can have freedom of speech. You're just not free of the consequences of that speech. So if you got somebody on a platform yep. that's spreading some falsehoods about somebody, spreading some bullshit about somebody, yep. when you sue that person, name the platform in the lawsuit too. So the reason why I would give you pushback on that is because um, when you just named Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club is a business that is responsible for the entities that it hires. Um, Facebook is not putting out this information. People are using the outlet that Facebook is to put out the information. So suing Facebook would be the same as suing the radio waves. Like Deep dive. Listen. You see what I'm, I'm saying? No, I'm going to tell you why I don't but, see what you're saying. Let me just explain the difference, right? It's like okay. it's a difference between – suing Verizon Fios for something that somebody said on MTV and suing MTV. MTV is using Verizon Fios, which is the platform, in order to share their content. MTV is responsible for their content, right? Verizon Fios is the one that displays the content. Now, don't get me wrong. You have a food and drug administration for food, right? You have certain laws that dictate the cable airwaves as well. Right. So it's like there are filters for the content and the food that we consume so that when we go into a grocery store, we know that apple, we know that pear, we know that turkey sandwich is going to be up to standard. We don't have that with the Internet just yet because anything we consume on the Internet could be bad for us or it could be good for us. We don't know. So it is He's, tricky. But you see the difference, though? No. And I'm going to tell you why. If these organizations um, are, are holding facebook accountable for the hate that facebook lets on its platforms mm -hmm. then they should hold facebook accountable for the lies these 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 social media sites have on its platforms like they they i think uh i, I want to say it's the adl the adl asked advertisers to join the campaign to pause their spending on facebook and instagram until facebook did a better job of removing all of this hate that's on Facebook. All of these different um, white right wing conspiracy theorists, you know, who be saying shit on Facebook or so, you know, he, here's fuel, a, fueling racism and anti-Semitism yeah. on Facebook. If yep. they can be held responsible for that, they can be held responsible for the lies that they allow people to spew on Facebook in regards to other people. I understand what you're saying. I think that that's right. And I think in all sense, it's fair. Here's the other thing that you have to consider. These platforms like Instagram and Facebook are creating legislation and rules on what is hateful speech, not for one country where everybody agrees more or less what is considered hateful and what's not. They're doing mm -hmm. it for the world, right? So, for example, in a country like the U.S., saying certain things about women and women's roles, we might deem sexist. 
where you go to certain parts of the world, they might deem that as normal. They might deem that as completely regular and responsible. You saying something as simple as, I want my wife to be at home with the kids and cook dinner, that might be the expectation in certain parts of the world, where saying that in America, that might be looked at as misogyny and sexism. So So you take the the video down in America and leave it up in Iraq. But who do do that shit all the time? Do they? Like, what? If you post it, you can post a video, like last week, salute to my girl, Pretty V. Pretty V did a video with, uh, uh, damn, I can't remember a homie name right now. Uh, I can't remember the rapper's name, but she did a video that was Martin and Lawrence, right? Mm-hmm. And when I posted the video, immediately it said blocked and it said this video can't be viewed and it named like 10, 15 different countries. Because they didn't pay the rights for it. What you mean? They didn't like pay the rights to have their content viewed. Like that happens all the time where they haven't like paid the rights to oh, view yeah, yeah, their yeah, content. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying like, like take it down. Something. When you're in another country, like when you're in the Caribbean, it's certain things like... And I've told this story before. We was in Anguilla one year. I wanted to watch uh, Midnight, Moonlight. Yeah. And you couldn't watch it in that country. You couldn't watch no gay programming in that country. Because I went and I started, well, let me see, it broke back mountain showing. Nope. And so I just went down this rabbit hole of all of this gay programming on Netflix. All of it was blocked in that country. So that's an interesting deep dive right here. It's like, should we dictate the morality for the world? Should we go to the people in... uh, in uh, Anguilla and say, hey, listen, you're being homophobic by not showing gay programming. You need no. to show it. That's why so, I said take it down in America. Take so, the video down in America. But then who the fuck are we? Should We should allow blatant homophobia and like support blatant homophobia in other parts I don't, of the world? I don't, I, don't, I don't think none of these platforms should. And being that these platforms that are American owned. And by, by the way, being that these platforms are American owned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can dictate and regulate what they want. They shouldn't want no hate speech regardless of where it came from. And another example of that is on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Twitter has fact checking now, right? Right. So when somebody posts something that's not true, they immediately say, oh, well, the facts of this are X, Y, and Z, and they take down the tweet. It should be the same way when somebody makes uh, accusations against someone that's not true. But who decides what the facts are? Like, if you go to a country that is run by a religion, for example, the religion supersedes everything, right? Mm-hmm. Their facts are religious, so you might present some idea like, I don't know, the world is, you know, four billion years old, and they might go, no, nah, that's wrong. That's not real. Mm-hmm. The, the world started when God started the world, you know, a few thousand years ago. So what who if the decides fa- what, the, what, what the facts are? What if the facts are proven in a court of law? What if the facts say, no, nope, In wasn't their there. courts over there, they're dictated by religion, so they will give you pushback. I guess what I'm saying is it's hard to have one set of information that is going to be coherent for the whole and- world. Can O.J. Simpson be called a murderer? No, he's innocent. Media? Exactly, right? I don't, know, I don't know if he's, well, he was found innocent in the court of law. Yeah, he's found innocent in the court of law. Yeah. So if somebody gets online right now and says, O.J. Simpson is a murderer, O.J. should be able to sue for defamation. And that tweet or whatever it is on social media should be labeled as this is not a fact. O.J. Simpson was found innocent in a court of law. What's the point of having the goddamn courts? If you're not going to if you're not going to uh, adhere by what the court says, I wonder that's if you, all I'm saying. Yeah. I wonder if you have the freedom of speech, if, if under freedom of speech, you can say that somebody was a murderer and you can say even if they're found innocent, you can be like, no, I still feel like you're a murderer. I wonder if you're allowed to say that. At what it's point? Gotta be, it's got to be le- it's got to be legal. It's got to be some type of legal jargon for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Like, it has to be something. I don't know if the word would be, a, like, it can't be alleged, could it? Yo, I don't but know. That's another thing that's interesting. It's like, if we start putting our American ideals and our American or Western values on the rest of the world via social media, how is that not another form of colonization? And we're doing it under the guise of, hey, this is the right thing to do. This is progressive. What the fuck you think colonists did back in the day? Hey, you not- savages, here's the right thing to do. This is the progressive way to be. It's the same colonization. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it, but when we're talking about America, right? And we're talking about the Constitution, right? We're talking about freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is great. I want everybody to have free speech. But what do we always say? You're not free from the consequences of that speech. So if you say some shit just because you feel that way, or you say some shit because that's what you believe, great. But if it's not true, you got to be held accountable for that shit. That's what defamation is for. <laughs> that's what defamation lawsuits are for. That's what slanderous and lie. That's what libel is all about. Go ahead. Say whatever the fuck you want. But stand on that shit when the lawsuit comes. So 
should comedians be sued for the things they say? Yeah, I don't, I don't. What do you mean? Like, should a comic be sued for the things they say? Should The Onion, you know, the satirical news site, be sued for some of their headlines? Like what is the, the headlines? I would have to see. You got to give me an example. It's specifically was, satirical. It's like lies are made in that baked into the headlines. And there are wor- there are like there are rules to protect. That's what I'm saying, Chris. You're the author. Tell us about satire. <laughs> like that's what how are the rule, what that's are the rules how SNL isn't sued well, every single week. Yeah. Well, generally, satire gives you a pass. Um, you know, there, there there was a famous situation in France. I think the name of the magazine was like. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, Hebda. something, Charlie, yeah. Hebda. and they, they, they satire, they did a uh, cartoon satire of the Prophet Muhammad. And they got and, shot. Uh, up. Somebody ended up storming the office and pretty much killing a lot of the staff. So that's that's the most extreme version of when see, that's not goes wrong. that's not law though. I'm, I'm like, what's the what's the what's the rules of <clears> law <throat> when it comes to satire? That was just somebody being upset and being mad. Like, can somebody sue you over a satirical piece? Generally not. I don't know the specific laws, but generally, you know, we're talking the U.S., U.K., generally in a lot of countries, you get a pass if you can uh, prove that it's satire. I know in music, if you satirize a song, like that's how Weird Al was able to basically remake all those hits, right? Mm -hmm. That was satire. Right. It wasn't, if he had just remade Beat It, he would have gotten sued, but by making it Eat It, he was able to do it. Okay, I just Googled. Uh, and it says freedom of speech, why satire is protected. And they have satire versus defamation, a legal explanation. And um, over the years, it says over the years, U.S. courts have made it abundantly clear parody and satire are not defamatory. And it says the United States Supreme Court does not allow for recovery for parody or satire under a libel or slander claim unless the alleged victim can prove actual malice in the publication. So there's your answer. And malice is very hard to prove. It's hard to tell me um, how I feel about somebody because yeah, I under the form of, under the form of satire, it's yeah, or even under the form of comedy. But that's the yeah, thing. But, I, that's why I don't want that. I want to be able to say things that are not true. But, I say things that are not true all the time as a comedian, exactly. But if you start chipping away at what people can or can't say on different social media platforms, which is how we consume content, it's like you're going to chip away at all the funny content that we see. All these memes are lies. All these gifts are lies. They're not yeah. true, and that's what makes them funny. So I don't want to remove our sense of humor from our culture. That's one of the most, that might be the most dominant force of cultural values that we have is our sense I think, of humor. I think we're blurring two things, though. I agree with you on that, but I also agree that a person shouldn't be you know, accused of a crime on on social media if they did not commit said crime. Agreed. If, if and, and if facts of the case show they did not commit said crime, and if you're going to run around and say that type of stuff, you should be held liable. Yep, absolutely. I agree. I, I I think so. As far as far as comedy and satire and and jokes and stuff like that, totally different ball game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're actually out there accusing people of things. Bro, just make sure you standing on that shit. And I'm, and I'm talking about these people that go on these podcasts and say this shit like like the women y'all were talking about or the dude that was in Michael B. Jordan's closet. Because yeah. if any of those people decide, you know what, I want to sue this person for defamation. Mm. I want to sue this person for, 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 for slander. I want to sue this person for saying something about me that's that's not true. They got they got the right to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. I feel I feel very strongly about both. I don't want people accused of things that they haven't done, especially when the accusation is enough to, you know, convict you in the court of public opinion, as you often say. But I also want the ability to say whatever the fuck I want. So it's like this super fine line. How do we thread the needle? Do we thread it through satire? Do we thread it through intent? If your intent is to make a joke, can you say some fucked up shit about someone as long as it's, you know, through the lens of joking? That's why. I want you to be a member of the Chicago Balls. I want you to be a member of the Brooklyn Nuts. If you believe in freedom of speech, Say whatever the fuck you want, mm-hmm. but don't try to duck the consequences. Right. I don't care if it's an ass cutting. I don't care if it's a lawsuit. I don't care if it's people storming your goddamn place of work and shooting up the place. If you put something out there, Mark stand that on time. it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Stand on your shit. Don't run from it. Don't try to say, hey, I should be able to say X, Y, and Z. Yes, America is full of freedom of speech, but you show me one time where people have been free 
of said consequences. And I think that's the problem with social media. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a problem with all of these platforms. They allow motherfuckers to feel like they can just go out there and say whatever. This guy, John Fuck, or whatever the hell his name is, John Fucky, Hornets radio broadcaster. You know why he got suspended for putting the jazz niggers game is awesome on his Twitter? Because he works for a fucking corporation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he got something to lose. What happens oftentimes in these situations, motherfuckers with nothing to lose, just jump on and say anything. Ain't it sweet? Because any little gain is good for them. They don't give a fuck if his followers on social media. They don't give a fuck if his interviews, whatever it is. So all I'm telling people is when they jump out there and they say this type of shit, just make sure you got some fucking money for a lawyer or you know how to fight. One of the two. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I hear you. I just don't want to create a situation where, like, we justify violence for things that have been said. No, 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 (laughs) Shotzi. We've had this conversation before. You can't get you can't have it both ways because you just don't know. But by the way, that is what makes. Yeah, you can. That's the idea about free speech is you can have it both ways. No, you have what makes you have the freedom to speak back to me in any way you want. And I have the freedom to speak to you in any way you want. And then we just combat ourselves like that. That's the idea of it. And then once you start silencing free speech and you start taking away certain parts of that speech. I mean, now that that's a very I don't I don't want to take away. I I don't want to take away parts of free speech. All I'm simply saying is when you are a a free speaker. Yeah, you can't. Say what you're going to get back from that. You can say what you you can say what you want. Yeah, but what if I you said ho- what you hope yeah. to receive back? What if it I don't said, work like that? What if I said this though? What if I just gave you an example? Like, mm-hmm. all right, um, you can be openly homosexual and you can walk down the street and be openly homosexual, but you can't predict how that makes people feel, and they might come up to you and they might do some wild shit because you're walking around openly homosexual, like. That might be true, but it doesn't make it right. And that's why people are fighting against oppression all the time. And that's why they have hate crime laws to try to make sure things like that don't happen. And it's the reverse of what I'm saying. But if a motherfucker is able to get on social media and say whatever the fuck they want to say, they would watch themselves if they knew there was consequences to their actions. The reason it's not the reason it's not that many hate. I'm I'm not saying it is a lot of hate crimes, but the reason it's not a whole lot more. Hate crimes because niggas know that there will be consequences and repercussions and they're going to be held accountable for those hate crimes. Right. That's all I'm saying. I guess what I would say is like freedom of speech is what allows you to present the idea that these things are even a hate crime. Like if you back in the day were like, if you back in the day said, hey, we shouldn't beat up gay people. There'd be a lot of people go, man, shut the fuck up. What are you talking about? Right. But the fact that someone's allowed to say that means that freedom of speech is fine. But not yeah. freedom to, to lie. Yeah. And that's why you that's why you have defamation and slander laws. Yeah. You don't have yeah. the freedom to lie. Yeah, that's true. I think so I think social media that's gonna be the name of the podcast, freedom to lie. I think social media and all of these platforms give people the illusion that you have the freedom to lie. That's, that's what that you know what? That's what we're fucking up at. We kept calling it free speech. It's the free you it's the freedom of speech, I guess, has morphed into this Okay, I got uh, you nasty form of a virus called freedom to lie so look and here's the thing depending on how you represent yourself you can limit your freedom of speech for example if you consider yourself a a journalist you call yourself a journalist and you call your outlet whether it's on facebook youtube instagram twitter whatever it is if you consider your outlet an outlet of information and you are stating things as if they're facts when you do not know if they're facts, you're not using allegedly or any of that kind of stuff, then I understand you being stripped of your ability to state that information or being sued because you are saying you are a source of truth and you are lying, right? Without putting allegedly or any of that kind of shit. If you're a comedian, if you're a radio host, if you're an entertainer, you can say Things that are not true because you are coming from a place of entertainment, not from a place of, hey, this is 100% nuanced and true, researched and true. I don't know if that's true either, though. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about the comedians because comedians, most of the time, they say that they are truth tellers, right? And they's like every good joke comes from something that's true. 
Yeah, I don't there's know a there's a kernel just... of truth in things, but like so much of jokes have to do with lying. Like that's why the jokes are funny is because you direct yeah. people in one direction and then you say something that is completely in another direction. It's actually not true, and that's why it's funny. You know, when you're talking about like way back in the day, your your wild days, you talk about sucking a fart out of a butt like a bong rip. You don't do that, and that's why it's funny. It's a lie. It's a sarcastic version of reality that nobody could live up to. And that's why it's so hilarious because we all know it isn't true, but it would be such a funny thing if it was. So I think you're protected in saying that under this guise of, hey, look how absurd this is. It's an absurdist reality. That's that's my opinion on it. Yo, I'm looking at this article. Um, this is a great conversation. Uh, five comedians who are sued over their material. And Only somebody wrote this article in 2013 because I didn't, I think I did know this. Donald Trump sued Bill Maher uh, over an offer that Bill Maher made to donate $5 million to charity if Trump released his birth certificate to prove he's not the spawn of his mother having sex with an orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> but but Bill Maher is not the first person to be sued. George Carlin uh, got got sued in 1972 for, for sure. violating obscenity laws. Seven deadly when, words. Yeah, when he did his, I, I knew about this one. He did his seven words you can't say on television act at Summerfest. Lenny um, Bruce but, but, too. But a, a judge did drop the case. A judge dripped up, did drop the case. And let me see. The following year, I wonder why he got sued for that though. Because it was against the oh, the it was against the rules. Okay. Oh, and that's oh, that actually is what they what, what created the safe harbor time zone, in which indecent material can be broadcast. Do you know Sunder Kroonquist? No, is that like an orange soda? <laughs> nah, it's a comedian who got sued by her mother-in-law because her daughter-in-law made false and highly offensive comments. About her and members of her family. Oh God, these people in are a so stand-up show. No, nah, dude. Wow. No. Nah, got nah, dismissed nah. though. As it got should dismissed. get dismissed, but now you have to go oh. through the legal trouble. Exactly, Cat Williams. Yep. Cat Williams. Cat Williams got on stage for confronting a heckler. Took off his clothes and attempted to fight at least three audience members. See, that's not jokes though. Yeah, that you know what might I'm saying? Be like, that's not over something you said. Yeah. You know Ch Choi Hyo Jung, no. South Korean comedian star? No. He got sued for making a politically, politically charged joke. Yeah, he, he did a sketch on which he explained to children how they could achieve a career in politics by bribing election committees, shaking hands with old ladies, and making grand campaign promises. This is so great. I sued for that. You need and this. J and Jay Leno. Jay Leno uh, regularly picks on politicians, but a joke landed him in his network in court when he ridiculed former presidential hopeful Mitt Romney. Wow. Yeah, that's suit was bought on by shit. a resident in California. The segment in question includes a clip from the entertainment news show The Insider, which featured footage of Romney's house. The problem with the Insider clip that the Tonight Show aired was instead was that instead of featuring one of Romney's summer homes, it was a picture of a Sikh holy golden temple in India. Mm -hmm. And so the California man sued Leno and NBC on behalf of himself and this community organization. Wow. I don't see it. See, I, oh, that's not, I don't know. That's not words, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. I guess. I don't know. All I'm anyway. simply saying is I want everybody to be able to, you got to, it's, it's got to be consequences to the shit that comes out of your mouth. Cause in real life it is. Mm -hmm. You can't. It just is. You can't do what you do on stage in the street, Andrew. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I just I disagree with any sort of censorship when when it comes to the discussion between like freedom and censorship. I don't, I don't want censorship. Side of I want consequences. Yeah, but that is censorship, right? If you're going, hey, the consequences for saying the wrong thing are you go to jail, that's censorship. There's a reason why we have freedom of speech, man. It's a very valuable uh, core American value. You know, and we're you, literally like you, the only country that has freedom of speech. There and are it, countries and, and, that have freedom of expression, but not freedom of speech. But we don't have freedom of speech, though. How because so? Because motherfuckers get held accountable because of the shit they say all the time. 
There's a price to everything that comes out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Everything. And, and, and you brought up the newspapers and stuff. It is a reason, or well, at least back in the day, journalists would have to measure twice in order to cut once. It was a reason journalists would have to do fact checking. It was yeah. a reason journalist. It was a reason journalists would have to really dig deep and make sure that the shit they were presenting was accurate, because they could be held liable. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some like research that shows otherwise. Like, as far as like um, you know, news has always gone. It's always been bias. I think we have this theory now that like news is this new bias thing. But back in the day, the newspaper always reflected the owner of the newspaper company and their political leanings. That's how it's been since the beginning of time. So it's like, I don't is know. that lying? Is political leaning political lying? No, it's not lying. But like you, it's your truths, right? Like so, both the the Democratic Party and the Republican Party will say different things about uh, affirmative action and whether it works or it doesn't work, right? And they'll both find facts that like fit their agenda, and they both can be true within the context of what they're saying, but they could be considered lies within a greater context. You know, mm-hmm. like Democrats will go well, like Republicans will be like, look, Democrats, all these like cities that Democrats run are fucked up and they don't know how to run a city and they're running them to the ground. And then, you know, Democrats will be like, well, the reason why these cities are poor is because there are, you know, blah, blah, blah environments. They'll find a different reason for why they're poor. Well, you know, it's funny. It's even interesting with that. You can't sit here and, and Chris can speak to this more than me. We can't sit here and act like Donald Trump hasn't sued the fuck out of different outlets. Donald Trump has sued the New York Times, the Washington Post, and CNN for defamation. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? And he has so the money can, to do it. That's he, what I mean. So yeah. we can't sit here and act like that shit doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, like motherfuckers got to be held accountable. How many lawsuits has Trump put out there, Chris? Do you know? Probably. Uh, I don't thousands. know in the U.S. I mean, I think I think what you're kind of like calling for in a way is the system they have in England where there's a lot of free speech. But in England, you know, the, the, the libel laws are very serious and you can get sued and you will lose fairly easily. So there's still satire. I mean, uh, you know, you look at something like Monty Python. I mean, England has an incredibly rich history of satire. But in terms of personal accusations from one person to another, you get sued quick in England. And that really does kind of maybe impact people's decision, but on a political level, and I think this is the key, you can make fun of members of parliament. You can make fun of people in power. And I think that's critical. You don't ever want to find yourself in a society where politicians are off limits for jokes or criticism or a combination of both. But also, Chris, wouldn't you say that like the tabloids in England are some of the most critical and potentially, uh, you know, uh, and they spend a lot of time in court. I mean, you know, like you you can even look at like the situation with the royal family, like they're constantly talking about affairs and this, that and the other thing. But people get pulled into court in England all the time. I think another thing that happens there, and I'm not entirely certain, but this is what like limits the amount of like litigation is uh, if you lose, you have to pay the fees fees of the other person. Mm -hmm. And I love that system because now you're going into a lawsuit concerned you're like, fuck, right. I'm only suing this guy if I know for a fact I'm right. I'm not doing it like rich people in America do. Rich, rich people in America will just sue to shut you up. Hey, shut the fuck up. Now you want to be in a lawsuit? You want to keep talking about me? Shut the fuck up. That's what Donald Trump is doing. You want to yeah, talk Trump about Trump never me? enters a lawsuit thinking he's going to win. He's just trying to create leverage. Yep. He wants to bleed you out. So right. if you're rich enough, you can just bleed people out and then shut them the fuck up. And then effectively, you limit their freedom of speech. No, you know, you know, Schultz, you're right. And, you know, that's the crazy part even now. Um, you know, I remember back in the day when they used to talk about tabloids, right? And the reason that people would not never really sue the tabloids is because you would go to a lawyer and the, low, the lawyer would say, look, man, it'll cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and it'll drag on for years. And, you know, um, you know, when you're a public figure, you know, the, the, the standard of libel is high. So it makes the case difficult to win. And you got to prove actual malice. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, you got to prove that the tabloid was really negligent and they was really putting in there, putting this in there just 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 to hurt you. And they 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 had to know that the item was false. So they just displayed a reckless disregard for the truth. So, yeah, it is it is tough. But I, I think that's um that just goes back to what I was was saying earlier, like. 
Sometimes it is a reckless disregard for the truth. You're Sometimes right. you don't know what's right. true and you don't know what's true. But if there's a reckless disregard yep. for the truth, I think you should be held accountable. Yo, dude, I, I agree with you. And I wholeheartedly agree. Like, nobody should be able to... I don't want, I don't want to say nobody should be able to, but I don't want anybody lying on my name. I don't want people lying on your name. I don't want them putting things out there that are like easily digestible to like bring me, you or any of our friends or anyone in that in, in general down. I think that's fucked up. I wish there was a perfect system to figure it out. I don't know what that is, man. I, I truly don't know yeah. what it is. Consequences somehow though. I don't know what the fuck they would be. Fair enough. But I got to go pee. Pay some bills. Got him. All right, we're going to stop and pay some bill for a second. Look, guys, um, it's important that you look good in your suit. Simple as that. Make sure that you get a suit that fits you. A suit is one of these interesting things. You wear a suit that fits, and you are immediately treated with more respect. You are immediately treated All right. as if you got some wealth. You're immediately treated like there are things that are going on in your life and people want to know what the fuck they are. If your suit does not fit you right, you look like you're going to trial, okay? So make sure you get the right suit. This is what you can do. You can go to Indochino because they will make custom-made suits, okay? You can get made-to-measure clothing at fair prices, including suits, blazers, shirts, and coats. You get to customize everything from the fabric, the lining, the lapel shape, and the monogram, all right? The choice is all yours. Your clothing is then made to your exact measurement so it fits you perfectly. The best part, Indochino suits start at just $299. I cannot tell you how cheap that is for custom-made clothing, okay? All customiza all customizations included for $300 or less than, amazing. Indochino has a showroom across showrooms across America, or you can book a virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get an extra $30 off any purchase of a $399 or more suit, uh, blazer, clothing combo, whatever it is, at Indochino.com when you enter IDIOTS at checkout. That's Indochino.com, promo code IDIOTS. Go get your life right. Let's get back to the show. There are things you won't care about next week. Talk um, to have me. you been watching the goddamn NBA playoffs? I see, dude. I honestly, I started watching. I was not interested in the bubble at all. I was bored by it. I think the stakes weren't high enough. And the second we got into playoffs, I've been watching. The game is good. I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it. This Dame Lillard run is wild. Um, I'm excited. I'm all in. Charles Barkley said the Trailblazers are going to sweep the Lakers. I'm going to tell you why that's. And I, 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 I love. Somebody like Charles Barkley saying that because Charles Barkley has been around basketball mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think a team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis would ever get swept. Right. Like not swept. They might. Yeah. They can lose a series, but swept. I don't think they they didn't dig deep enough to why he thinks they're going to get swept unless I missed that part. Yeah. A sweep. Yeah. Maybe it's just because Dame Lillard is just playing out of his mind. He's just unstoppable right now. Because goddamn that old white man who probably goes to Aspen's as soon as he has time, Skip Bayless, yeah. put that fucking battery in his back. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, listen, we can't sit here and act like that shit don't motivate certain people. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't know what to do if a nigga wasn't talking shit about me. Right. <laughs> If you got something bad to say about me, now I'm really about to show you something and some flip flops, motherfucker. Yeah. Watch this crossover. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Like, so I, I, some people have different motivations. That's why you got to leave certain people alone. So certain, certain people are really just like Damon Little is going to be great regardless. Right. 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 He's just naturally great. Boy, when you give him something that motivates him. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. When you, when you give him something that motivates him, that's what I see right now. I just see Dame playing with a different level of motivation. Mm. I didn't see that in Dame's eyes before. He's just a good ass player. Now he like, oh, nah, I got something to play for other than a fucking championship. Do you think that's it? Or do you think that Dame has always been putting up big numbers, but he was lost in the shuffle because KD was playing and Kyrie was playing and Steph was playing. And now that those three massive names that were the headliners of the playoffs for the last fucking decade, it feels like, are out of the playoffs. Russell Westbrook is out right now. He's injured. He becomes the star of the bubble because he's the one, only one doing the most fantastic things in the bubble. I mean, we hear TJ Warren's name too. Maybe it's these superstars that NBA usually marketed 
are no longer in the spotlight, so they have to put the spotlight on someone, and it's Dame doing the exact same shit he's always been doing. I think that's an amazing point. I, I, I think it's a combination of the two. I would even say that what you said is probably 70% of it. Mm. You know what I mean? If I, if I had to break it down percentage-wise, I would say 30% motivation, 70% nah, Dame Lillard is a beast, and he's been a fucking beast. Been a anybody, beast. That watches, anybody that watches basketball has been saying shit like, yo, Dame is better than Kyrie, or Dame is better. I think Akash said that. Yes, before. he did. Like, Dame is better than such and such. Like, Dame has been a video game type of superstar. Like, right. he's been on 99. Right. But yeah, I, th- and I think it's something to that. And we haven't even really seen him. Have they been out of the first round? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They last made year. the finals. Last, last they made the Western Finals. The Western Conference Finals. Yeah, they did. Who? The did Blazers? They? No, they, yeah. they went out the Blazers second did. round. Let me no, see. I don't nah, remember. Blazers remember went the, out the second round against the... Yeah, they won the series last year when he hit that shot. Let me see. Yeah, he got he, the first round... They played OKC, and I think the second round they got bounced. Uh, maybe yeah, I'm bugging. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. them being in the Western Conference. But still, finals. they got I mean, out the first round. They've gotten out of the first round. I thought they made it to the finals, but maybe the second no, round. No, I don't think Dame has ever made it past the second round. What did oh, you no, guys? No, 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 they did. 2019. Yeah. Really? 2019 NBA Western Conference Finals, Trailblazers versus Warriors. Really? I, well, I don't remember that. Yeah, me neither. Did you guys see what uh, Did you guys see what Paul Pierce said today? Not what, what he say? say. He said that if the Lakers lose in the first round, it proves that LeBron is not a top five player of all time. Whoa, which he maintains. Whoa. Um. True. I, Whoa. I don't. I don't know if that proves that. I don't know. I, it proves to that we always. I mean, what have we always said about LeBron? That he is questionable in clutch moments. That's all. He's a great player who just don't have that extra, that 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 will to win. That that I don't know what you call it. when they used to call it get going in the zone. The killer. I don't, the yeah, killer I don't, instinct. I, that killer instinct. I, he, I mean, that's all that shows me. I mean, you know, when you got a big dick, man. You don't really just. It's hard to like Wait, learn what? strokes. You don't need to learn the strokes. You don't need to learn the strokes. You got to learn them strokes when you got that little dick. You got to impress girls with that little dick. That's right. When you learn, when you got a little dick, you got to learn every position. Mm -hmm. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? You got to learn how to eat pussy amazing. Mm -hmm. But when you got that bog D, that bog D, that big old Greek dick, you just show up, baby. That's all I'm saying. So Michael Jordan had that. LeBron LeBron had that. Listen, let's be honest. LeBron is so talented. And he don't always need been to try so hard. And so physically better than everybody else. Man, mm. that's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> uh, what did I say? He got that brawn D. Nothing. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just nothing, Sean. Good job. Um, things you won't care about next week. Uh, Hot Boy Turk. What is that? <laughs> What's that? You know who Hot Boy Turk is? Nah, who's that? There's four hot, there was four Hot Boys. It was Juvenile. You know Juvenile, right? Oh, yeah. I know Turk. I love Turk. You know BG. No, no. It's BG I love. You know Wayne. Yeah. Turk was the fourth member. It was All right. Give me a... No, like nigga a, 16. Um, no, no. Okay. Saying six figures. What? Something, something, yeah. something. Ooh, you go, I, don't I, you I do remember it. it. Come don't on. Do it. I'm not doing it, but I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it, but the boy remembers, bro. Come on. Now you ain't going to catch me slipping. You ain't going to catch me slipping. <laughs> but no. Yes, he said that. Um, so much ice, you could skate on a... Right? Isn't on, that it? On a river. You can, so river. much ice, you can skate on a frozen river. Frozen That's river. Said. That's right. No, but what's That's the rest of the song? He said, "That's that's it, that's that's literally the only part I remember." But that, I used to love that verse. Yeah, but, um, kill that shit. He, what happened to Dirk? That, he, he said him and Lil Wayne caught crabs. Or Turk, what? Back in the day. Oh, smashing the same. He said they caught crabs from two sisters from Houston. Whoa! So I guess both sisters had crabs. And I got they, crabs. Uh, call me a Pisces. No, what is it? Capricorn? <laughs> What's the one that's a crab? <laughs> What's a- Cancer is a crab. Cancer is a crab? Cancer. Yes. Oh, shit. Uh, you know what's wild? The things men bond over. Okay, go. That's a wild <laughs> thing to bond over, bro. Like, yeah. That's my boy, man. Because he, he started the conversation up like, man, Lil Wayne, that's my brother, man. Like, you know, that's 
Hey man, we call crabs together. (laughs) 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 The stuff stuff men bond over is wild. No, but the real question I got is why did two sisters have crabs together? That's a little bit funky. (laughs) Dirty house. Dirty house. Dirty house or maybe a little incestito. Sharing panties. They might have been sharing you know their panties, bro. Sharing panties, but not sharing secrets. Because one of them had crabs, but didn't tell the other sister. Oh, shit. <laughs> where do crabs Can I wear come those? From? Where do crabs come from? Like, the, the ocean. Where the little tiny things will come like The crabs. ocean, literally. And, That's and what and happens when you know you go to Cancun or some shit like that. You swim in the Cuba ocean, place. they got crabs in there, and then they, then they get on that. Yeah, I'm just Cuba saying, place. like, so where are the lights at before they get to your hair? The ocean. You're swimming in the ocean. And then they get up in your bush. Lice aren't in the ocean, are they? No. Lice? He's just talking. Crabs. Like, crabs are in the ocean. It's not real crabs, though. I know, but you can get them. at. They got soft shell. They That's got... what I'm saying. I know it's not real crab. <laughs> I know it's not real crab. I'm saying, but where are they at before they get? They're in oh, the ocean. Oh, where are they living before they live on your yeah. dick or your vagina is what you're saying. In yeah. the ocean, bro. That is a good fucking question, Taylor. The, Google. Google. Don't go Google. to the ocean, yo. Stick to the rivers and the Google. lakes that you're used to. Google, where do pubic lights come from? Okay. Mm-hmm. What does it say? <laughs> Google that and then make sure you don't die today because when they start your fucking search history and your- That's going to be the last computer. shit that they found, yo. <laughs> what does it say? The hookah spot? It says the most common way to acquire pubic like is through sexual intercourse. But they're not telling me where they came from, though. I'm telling you, it's it the ocean. It says from sharing clothing, bed, line, linens, and all that, but... Or scissoring. The origin from it... You can get them from scissoring aggressively. It says from gorillas roughly <laughs> three million years ago, scientists now report, rather than... Everything comes from monkeys. Monkeys are tired of being blamed for everything. <laughs> Yo, it's the easiest thing to blame, ain't it? <laughs> ain't it really the easiest thing to blame, bro? We need to start asking what came first, the monkey or the goddamn egg, not the chicken. Like, monkey, why the fuck are monkeys... The root source of everything. But they are Humans, the root source of us. Crabs. Like, what the fuck, man? AIDS? Didn't they start AIDS, too? <laughs> yes. Somebody had sex somebody with a monkey. Somebody was that saying the, somebody that was the rumor back in the day. Yeah, that was the rumor. Okay, uh, things you won't care about next week. But All you right. should. You should this one, bro. Okay, talk to Because y'all me. not fucking paying attention, but I am. All right, talk to me. The Pentagon's announcement of a new UFO task force. Let's go. Okay. The unidentified aerial phenomena tax force. I'm telling you right now, the lease is up on planet Earth, bro. They coming to collect? They coming to fucking collect. The lease is up on planet Earth. It is not a coincidence that they they, they showed us the pictures of the Pentagon released the, the video mm-hmm. of the unidentified flying object flying throughout the air and all that shit. It's not a coincidence. Mm. They are slowly but surely just putting things out to the American public. Right. To let us know that other life exists mm-hmm. and they will start walking amongst us soon because I'm telling you the lease is fucking up. You really think Whatever, the lease is up? I, yes, man. Whatever treaty they seen. had. And I'm going to tell you why I think it is. You notice that you've seen all of these people talking about traveling to space, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, the Elon Musk and the Richard Branson's of the world. They want to do tours and Mars and all of that type of shit like that. Quid pro quo. If y'all uh, going to be just coming to our pre- planet, kicking then shit. Then we going to come to your shit now. That, that's right. Prepare uh, your motherfucking people. Prepare your people for what's to come. Interesting. We coming. I really, I really truly believe that, Joe. Why, like why else would they have a UFO task force all of a sudden? Interesting. And also, why else would they be giving Elon Musk all this money to go to Mars? People really out of here, huh? Bro, and I I, I was watching, because uh, my daughter, my five-year-old, mm, super into space, says she wants to be an astronaut, all of that stuff, right? Like, in the NASA and all that. So I'm watching YouTube videos with her the other day. Call me stupid if y'all knew this already. I didn't know that it was five dwarf planets in our solar system. I don't even know what a I'm gonna say dwarf exactly planet what is, a dwarf is planet. bro. Did that girl well, suck it off? It used to be nine planets, <laughs> right? I know it the Pluto's be, not a planet no more. Pluto's a dwarf, a dwarf planet, oh. but it's it's four other dwarf planets. One of them isn't even shaped like a sphere. One what? of them is like a elongated, like fucking two. It almost looks like the eggplant emoji. Interesting. Really? And they all got names and everything. It's I didn't know that. I was sitting there intrigued. You know, it's one of those things that you're sitting there and your daughter's like, watch this with me. And she 
is always looking at me to make sure I'm staying awake watching. Yeah. And when that part came, I was like, oh, shit. Chris, did you know that? Yeah. I mean, there's actually a video. I'm just looking for it right now that takes you on a visual tour of our solar system. And it, it, it'll blow your mind. I mean, there's so many planets. And when you talk about other systems, I mean, there are hundreds of millions of other systems out there. Forget about planets. <laughs> systems. Yes. Here's the thing America needs to understand because we're so fucking arrogant. We don't know what the fuck is going on up there. <laughs> like We have no idea what the fuck is going on in outer space. We can sit here and lie to ourselves and tell ourselves, yeah, it's this many planets and that. We have no fucking idea, bro. It's impossible that there's not something out there. Come on. It's impossible. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. We're talking about hundreds of millions of planets, not 50, not 60, hundreds of millions. Charlamagne, you know a lot of people that don't believe that, though? Like, do you know a lot of people that... Because that's arrogance. No, I'm saying you actually know a lot of people that... Because I feel like I know a lot of people that believe in aliens. You know, actually, a lot of people that don't believe in aliens? Um, Yeah, that's a good point. Do you know anybody who doesn't believe in aliens? Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't believe that it's it's other life out there. Who? Who? I'm going to say, who are these... That's There's plenty of people. The same motherfuckers that probably but what's the, the earth reason? Flat. I'm I saying, like, but what's the reason for them not believing that? Like, how do they expect them to get here? Probably fear. It's very hard to think. It's it's very hard yeah. to think that it may be something out there that you don't know. Human well, beings. It's, it's also religious, right? It's like uh-huh. I think that most of like the Abrahamic religions have looked at Earth as the center of the universe. And that we are the only image of God. And if aliens are out there in galaxies far, far away, we got to start looking at this book and be like, "Uh oh, what Ooh. else might be a little off? Ooh. But I mean, the Bible talks about the will in the sky. The Bible talks about angels that came from heaven. Yeah. So exactly. maybe those angels might be aliens. That's interesting. That's all I'm saying. Yo, son, when That's- you look at like some of this old architecture and not just architecture, like there are certain blocks, uh, blocks, I think they're called like megaliths, and they're just like huge, just huge rocks that have been like shaved down and like placed in certain places, the pyramids and, you know, Stonehenge, all this kind of things. Like how could you move blocks of that size? The type of architecture they did thousands of years ago, 4,000 years before the pyramids, that nothing even came close to it for thousands of years, like that had to be aliens, bro. That is not yeah. even a question in my mind whether that was aliens or humans are advancing at different rates throughout history. Like we could advance and then die off and then advance yeah, yeah, again yeah. and then die off again. Yeah. Yeah. For all we know, we might be the, 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 the wackest version of humans ever. That's the thing, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for real. We might've been a, a, a super God-like species back in the day. Yeah. Just and, and I would think we would kind of have to be to live around dinosaurs, right? If we did live around them, I mean, there's no skeletons that, that are old enough to show that we have. Shit, because you don't check the skeletons, check the goddamn dinosaur's stomachs. <laughs> what did the dinosaur <laughs> shit look like? Was there a hand or foot in that motherfucker? <laughs> like, I don't think you, I don't be it checking the wrong thing. Yo, it. that's a good point. Like, why is it that you don't see bones inside the dinosaur? Yeah, because they ate other dinosaurs. They ate other stuff. dinosaurs that got well, I mean, bones. Years of decay, though, right? But yeah, why, but did, why don't the their bones, bones the, decay? Yeah. I guess the bile in their stomach breaks down the bones. I don't know. Why don't dinosaur bones decay? Well, their bones don't, but the, stu- the bones in their stomach must decay from like some sort of bile. My sister believes that she doesn't think that the dinosaurs were as big as they'd say they were. Well, the, what do you mean? I don't know. She just that's the belief. part that's not believable. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she thinks. I don't know. <laughs> so she believes there's a T Rex, but she's like, no, nah, it was probably like ten feet, not. 100. But I believe but with the T Rex, I don't think that it was how it was either, though. Because think about it, why do they have those little tiny ass arms? Because it's a bird. What, what are they are you using those arms? About, they have feathers. All of them have feathers. They aren't like lizards. They're all birds. All those dinosaurs are birds. I've heard that before, but. But obviously, the feathers aren't going to stay around for 65 million years. The bones might, but not the feathers. By the way, Tyrannosaurus rex. They come in eggs and shit. Say what? They range from 12 to 20 feet. That's not like unbelievable. That's like giraffe, bro. It's not unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? That's not an unbelievable height. They're only 20 feet tall? 12 to 20 feet. Height of a T Rex, 12 to 20 feet. Come on, bro. 
<laughs> you can get away from that shit. That shit is all head. <laughs> Come on, Zach. You don't think you can get away from a T Rex, bro? I don't uh, know. When you said all head, I went back to that goddamn story. Y'all told me about that woman in that room with them seven <laughs> basketball players. <laughs> As soon as you said that, I do not know why. My mind went right back to that story. Like, what what you looking at over there, Al? Oh no, yeah. So but they were forty feet long though. They were forty feet long. Yeah. What's that mean? Because they got girth? the tail. Yeah, from the tail to the head. <laughs> said girth. Yo. You what? know what I'm about to ask next? How they fuck? Google T Rex penis <laughs> right Yo, now. Zed. <laughs> It's Google true. I need. I gotta see what the fuck. You don't never hear about the T Rex's penis. All you no. hear about is the tail and but the I fact always, that they ate meat. I always thought about that with kangaroos. Like their arms are so short. How do they hold the animal while they fuck it? You know what I mean. Like if your arms are like this, you can't hit it from the back. How you hold it while you're fucking? Why we ain't never seen a kangaroo's penis? I don't know. Wait, that's a chicken's dick. Let me see. <laughs> Hold on, Taylor. Let me see what you're looking at. Taylor, give me the goddamn computer. Let me see what the fuck you looking at over here. Um, oh, shit. Is that a chicken dick? <laughs> nah, get out of here. That's not a chicken dick. Oh, wow. There's one version of them having sex, but this one looks like it doesn't have a tail. Chickens don't have dicks. I mean, they got to have something. Well, if chickens had dicks, we'd have been ate one of them shit. Them shit would have been fried. Go ask your question, um, Taylor. Is chickens, are they mammals? Yeah. But they lay eggs, though. Oh, fuck. That's chickens, a great chickens question. Chickens aren't mammals? Are they? They're no, not. because they lay eggs. So then what are they? They're not They're reptiles. dinosaurs. No, they're birds. I don't really had this discussion they're, last night. They're poultry. They're poultry. Uh, they're fa- yeah, they're, they're fowl. Okay. But fowl, I thought they're mammals, fowl. too. They're not mammals, fowl. bro. You no, sure? No, no, they're not mammals. Don't act like you know foul. shit. Yeah. Remember you took, yo, when we were on flagrant two, yo, <laughs> we were on flagrant two. flagrant. I was joking. <laughs> All right, well, Al said, Al goes like this. Al goes, <laughs> we're like, so what happens if you just like lay on an egg? No, no, what is it? What did you say? I don't remember. Al thought the thing that makes a chicken egg turn into a chicken is just heat like if you just lay on it that's what makes it turn into what? a chicken not that like it gets inseminated wait what nah, he don't know what he's talking about <laughs> wait, what? wait. He don't know what wait. wait Al say what it was it was, was funny it? as what? fuck <laughs> what was it Al say what it was nah so like um, uh, <laughs> a chicken has to sit on the egg okay. and then eventually it grows and then hatches or whatever the case is okay. so <laughs> The funny joke I made was that <laughs> if you don't, if you just like continue to heat the egg, but like the chicken's not there, it will eventually turn into the egg. And the reason why we what, have- wait, wait, what will eventually turn into the egg? Let me turn to a bird. But uh, the reason why we have eggs is because we take the egg away oh, before Al said, no, Al the chicken said, gets Al long said you gotta to put, on Al said you got to put eggs in the refrigerator because if eggs are in a warm place, oh, they yeah, turn yeah, into yeah, a chicken. <laughs> No. But then, that shit killed me, bro. But then, but that then shit think killed about, me, bro. But, um, I think you should bring back inside jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, said, Alex said that was a joke. I didn't hear the setup. I can yeah. understand why you would laugh. Bro, that shit was too yeah. funny, bro. He said, nah, my, buddy, my, it, buddy yeah. goes, my buddy goes, who is it? It was Mark or Akash. Who was the incubator, though, then? No, Mark or Akash goes, yo, do you have to put eggs in the refrigerator? And then Al goes, hell yeah, you do. We go, why not? Because if you just left them on the counter, them chits would turn into chickens. Really? <laughs> and then we go, what the fuck? He goes, why the fuck do you know that? He goes, he goes, trust me, I know about chicken. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that shit was good, bro. That's a good joke. Why would you know about chicken? Yeah, let's bring back inside jokes, right? Because then <laughs> you can so just, maybe it's the structure. Right I get why. I get uh, why. Charlotte I get the punchline. Him, bro. <laughs> Charlotte, don't, Charlotte just don't know nothing anymore, right? He don't know what hoes are. He don't know what I, jokes I, are. He don't know nothing. Oh no! Now, oh, I don't know. See, but see, because it's a difference between funny and a joke. Is it funny? Yes, but <sighs> Alex said the joke. I mean, I meant I was trying to be funny. Got, okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. Words matter. That's all I'm saying. Words you matter. Could be, it could be a joke still, too. You could say a joke, something is not true. And if you're saying way, it, is, it is true. I would say that's a joke, too. After I let some stupid shit like that come out of my mouth. And everybody <laughs>, laughs at me. I'm like, oh, guys, I'm just joking. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do let's do some asking idiot, Taylor. Yeah. Get the okay. fuck out of here. What um, we got? Wait, before you didn't want to talk about the UPS stuff at all? What you UPS stuff? Like Trump trying the USPS. to... USPS. Or USPS, yeah. That shit is just fucked up. Like, that shit is... Um, Come on, yeah. y'all. Y'all don't know anything about it. Let's just admit, none of us know anything about it. What's there not to know? I looked up this shit. This shit is so fucking difficult. I was reading this whole breakdown. The problems of the USPS have not started in the last fucking three months. This has been going on for the last, like, five years, ten years even... There's a lot of different things going on, and it's just like, if we're going to give an honest, if we just going to fuck around and be brilliant idiots about it, let's do it. But let's not act like we actually know what's going on. I what think you, I know what's going saying, on. What do you mean? What like right. like, the, like if right, Donald, Trump, Donald Trump verbatim said, mail-in voting doesn't work out well for Republicans. And that's why I'm not giving them the motherfucking money to get back on their feet unless they get rid of mail-in voting. Now, do they need money to get back on their feet? Yeah. Will they be cool. insolvent by the time of the election? Oh, I have no idea about that. So my, what I've read is that they were going to be insolvent by the time of the election, but because of corona, there's way more packages being sent, so they're actually good into the new year. So the idea that they're just going to shut down is not actually true. Now, if Trump is doing anything to interfere with the election in any way, shape, or form, that's fucked up. And he can't not fund something because it doesn't, because it potentially helps him. I think that's fucked up. And he, I mean, even saying that is stupid. That being said, the problems with the USPS have existed for fucking years. This is a business that is not functioning. This business is not profitable. So if we want to get into all those ways of like how to make it profitable or what we can do or can't do, like that's a way I longer think discussion. Think, what the fuck? Hold on. I think you're missing the part where Donald Trump said blatantly Republicans should fight very hard when it comes to statewide mail in voting. Democrats are clamoring for it. Tremendous potential for voter fraud. And for whatever reason, doesn't work out well for Republicans. Well, I, I don't think there's anything. That that that's that unreasonable about trying to stop voter fraud. My curiosity about that is why is it only voter fraud towards uh, Republicans? Why can't Republicans do the exact same thing that the Democrats would hypothetically do? If he's alleging the Democrats are going to try to steal the election through voter fraud with you know mail in ballots, well then Republicans can also try to steal the election through voter fraud through mail in ballots. It's not it's not only one group can do it; they could both do it, right? Um, maybe, but for whatever reason, Trump doesn't want it. And I think it says a lot when all you have to do is give money to a service that forget the voting that benefits hundreds of millions of people throughout the country. Motherfuckers can't get their medicine. Motherfuckers ain't getting their checks on time. The country is already fucked up because right. of coronavirus and the pandemic. So why would you shut off a service that so many of your people use, especially in those rural it's areas down off. south? But that's the thing, it's not shut off. That's the thing yeah, that happens but, with the, the mother, but motherfuckers is taking weeks and weeks to get their fucking medication just because they don't have the resources to get it to them in a timely manner. You think it's because of the resources? Yes, 100 percent. I mean, listen, it's no coincidence that motherfuckers just in the past month and a half, two months, haven't been getting packages. And that did that started before the choice to like not defund, right? That started when they were doing the reorganization with this guy, DeJoy, who's like the new postmaster general, right? And the policy was, hey, if the package, is, the package misses the shipping date, it misses the shipping date, and that's what this costs. That's what, it, that, that's what needs to be done in order for us to be more efficient or whatever the fuck it is. All I, I, I know Donald Trump started shifting the blame for the U.S. Postal Service funding problems to Democrats, and he hasn't acknowledged his administration's efforts to undermine the USPS you know, and that shit started three months ago or three months before election day. When, when the fuck? Where, where we at now? You're like, what, two months to election time? Mm -hmm. So let's say let's say a, a month ago. Yeah. I mean, so, I just I think that I don't know. these these issues with the USPS have existed for a long time. Like they're lack you don't of think it's no coincidence that he's blaming Democrats 
Of course. And saying that of he course. doesn't want mail-in ballots. Of course. And I think that, look, I think this whole thing gets politicized. And this is the newest thing that we're going to talk about. And then, then for the next maybe a week or two, we're going to talk about this. And then a new thing will pop up that will be politicized. This is just and, and, political and how theater. Do you, how do you explain bullshit. them removing collection boxes off the streets in some states? What's the point of that? To limit the amount of pickup because they don't have the uh, reason to go pick up these places in the same, I don't know. Make it so why'd they stop them. it so fast then? But they just announced Sunday that they're going to stop the removing of the collection boxes because of recent customer concerns. Mm, because of recent customer concerns. That's why they stopped it. So, but if it's a problem, like if, if it's really a problem, right. then you take the boxes away and you say, no, we have to do this for the greater good of the post office. But if you can just stop that problem because people have concerns, like, yo, why y'all taking the collection boxes away? Because we all know the so, reason they're taking the co- Well, what is the reason why they're taking them away? Uh, I think they're taking the boxes away because this is blatant voter suppression right in your fucking face. So Trump is trying to suppress the vote. And then Trump is also claiming that Democrats are trying to inflate the vote. Potentially illegally, right? He says he thinks that uh, I I was I was looking at um, I don't know if it was CNN or MSNBC and they showed the statistics and percentage wise, Mm -hmm. for whatever reason, mail in voting always benefits Democrats. Um, but in person always benefits Republicans. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but that's what the the studies show. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's far and away. It was like 60% to like 20%, 30% mail-in ballots benefit Democrats in person benefits Republicans. Right. And low voter turnout always benefits Republicans. Right. Gotcha. So you live it. We're, we're in a time right now where you have the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of people probably are going to be afraid to go to the polls in November. You have a lot of older people. That's the other thing, too. I think a lot of you younger folks, I'm glad we're on this. A lot of you younger folks need to volunteer to work at the polls this year. Because usually yeah. when you go to these polls, who do you see working these polls? You Old see older people, folks. bro. I think this is the year that a lot of younger folks should really get involved and saying, you know what? I want to work the polls. Let grandma and grand granddaddy stay home. Mm-hmm. You know, let your old mom and your old mom stay home, and 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 you go out and, and and work the polls this year. Because I don't think this is a coincidence. I would love to just say, yeah, you know, this no. Is I, a, uh, uh, I'm not saying it's coincidence. I 100 okay. percent believe that it is being like politicized, and I think Trump. Again, this is me thinking. I don't fucking know. If he thinks that vote, what is it called, mail-in voting puts him at a disadvantage, yeah. he's going to do everything to push back against it. I, I mean, I he's, believe- listen, I, it's, it's his fault because he admitted in that Fox News interview right. that he opposes at least part of the proposed emergency funding infusion for the post office because he believes the uptick in mail-in ballots Could during the him. pandemic will favor Democrats. Absolutely. And, and That's I guess, voter suppression. A hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. I guess what I'm trying to say is I am not shocked and I'm against voter suppression in any way, shape, or form. What I'm trying to say is I am not shocked that a politician is going to either suppress or allow a potentially harmful thing to their campaign. So, for example, just as Democrats are saying, hey, you can't possibly go to a polling station. It's dangerous. We shouldn't have live polling stations. We should only go home. And in the same breath are also saying, but if you'd like to protest in groups, that's totally fine. Go do that. And that doesn't spread Corona in any way, shape, or form. The same, they say that in the same breath because they know if they said protesting was bad and could spread the illness, that they would get pushback from their supporters. So well, what Democrats, I'm saying is- Democrats aren't saying not to go to the polls. Democrats are just saying that due to the climate that we're in mm-hmm. with coronavirus and the pandemic, if you don't feel comfortable going to the polls, then the mail-in ballot option should be able to happen- and it shouldn't interfere with our com- election. Completely reasonable. Completely reasonable. That being said, you haven't heard them criticize this, criticize the spread of Corona through any protest because they know that it would get pushed back from their supporters, right? And now they have. 
Not really. I mean, you've literally seen public accounts saying, hey, we are, uh, you should not go to the gym. You should not do anything. You should not congregate outside unless, of course, you are protesting. And by all means, do that. Now, I'm actually okay with that. I'm supportive of that. Uh -huh. Protesting is part of the American creed. It's part of like our ideals. You have the right to assemble. And you have the right to protest. So I support it. I'm just saying, I'm not shocked that Trump is giving pushback against this. Just like I'm not shocked that any liberal politician is completely okay with uh with you know forming large groups etc yeah but the sad part is what we've normalized with donald trump is is crime <laughs> like when when he pardons people who have you know t t testified for him and lied and then gone to jail for it we he pardons them and nothing happens and this is just another example of us really normalizing what's going to turn out to be dictatorship in a second don't think it can't happen in america <laughs> right I think I we might get, be like, we might be too crazy for dictatorship, bro. Nah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I gotta see. I, to be I, honest with you, I I, I I hate to throw it out there. Mm hmm. Allegedly, little pussy. Who? America? Little pussy. You 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 wild, bro. <laughs> you wild, bro. <laughs> a little, a little, you wild, a little bro. pussy. Schultz. You wild, Schultz. bro. We'll we'll fight each other. I don't think we rebelling against no government, bro. You see that thing? I, you you forgetting who these motherfuckers are, bro? These freedom oh. fighters out here, man. They, I don't they, see they, it. They some wild, you don't see it? What happened to the dude? They shot up while he was playing the baseball game. Ooh. Americans are out there shooting that senator or congressman. So you think? Let's just let's just let's say Americans don't play. Put it this way: if 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 six nine was trolling America instead of rappers, he would have been gone out of here. So if Trump loses in November, six nine knows exactly who he cannot troll, and that's listen, crazy right wing Americans. If Trump loses in November, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. doesn't leave the White House, he out of here. Finesses some, tries to finesse some shit to stay in the White House, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. You think you think you think America's gonna fight back? Depends how he loses. Like if he, for example, shows. He has a bag of mail, fake mail-in ballots. <laughs> and he goes, here are fake mail-in ballots that have all bunch of names of dead people. And look how they finesse the system. And don't act like it hasn't been finessed before. Chris will tell you right now what happened with the uh, the the mafia and JFK in Chicago, Chris. Tell him about that, Chris. Yeah, uh, the uh, JFK, They Chicago and Illinois have a history of ballot stuffing. But I think the difference is, and the ballot stuffing did favor the Democrats in those situations. It won JFK the election. Sure. He he worked with the mob in Illinois, and he worked with people, I don't know if you call it the mob in West Virginia, but those were the two states that, you know, were most affected. Uh, you know, the difference, though, is ultimately, you know, the Democrats have always respected the election, the results of the election. If you go back to 2000 with Gore versus Bush, they went with it. Mm -hmm. They they put the health of the country above the health of the party. Right. Even with Trump, wild. even with Trump versus Clinton. Remember, Trump lost the popular vote. Um, they didn't fight that. They took it. They well, took the L mean, for the better. There's nothing to fight there. This country is not decided. Okay, by well, a let me ask you vote. this. If the roles are reversed this time around, if Biden wins the Electoral College and Trump wins the, uh, hold on one second, the, the popular vote, the popular vote, do you think he's going to take that the same yes. way that Clinton took it? Yes. No, no. Wait, wait, not wait. Not in on, a million years. Hell hold on, hold on, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, not in a million hold on, hold on, years. Hold on, hold on. Do I that think is, that he will leave Donald office? Donald J. I think he'll say things like, I won the popular vote. They didn't. But we have to understand this is a representative democracy, and the Electoral College is part of that. We got to stop acting like we don't know what the fuck that thing is every time it doesn't go in our favor. Donald Trump is not. By Ab the way, I'm Abraham a Lincoln did not win the popular vote. Okay? He won the Electoral College, and thank the fuck God. Andrew, everything that we're talking about right now, mm -hmm. we are, we are going to get the opportunity to see. We'll find out. So what, I'm I, what I will right say now. is this. I'm Charlotte, telling you right Charlotte, now, we're going to get the opportunity to see because Donald Trump wants to be president for life. Yo, so Menard I will, has been telling y'all this shit for a year I'll give you this. and some change. I'll give you this. Okay? I'll give you this. I'll give you this 100%. I'll talk about it real quick. I yeah. And I saw, I watched the video with you and Akash talking about it. God damn it. So here's <laughs> right? the thing. What did we say? What did we say? 
I didn't watch the whole thing. I'm lying. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I watched the first five minutes and I didn't get no credit. So I turned it off. I'm going to be honest. That's just ego. That's just all ego. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't hear my name mentioned in the first five minutes. I didn't hear my boy say that crazy motherfucker Charlemagne has been saying this shit for a year some change. So I kind of clocked. I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 I got interested in something else. All right, that's fair enough. You gave us five minutes. It counts as a view. <laughs> <laughs> Got he. <laughs> but, so do I think Trump has that same, um, I don't even know how to describe it, like the same patriotism, I guess, that it took the Democrats to go, okay, we want to keep the country together and that's more important than really dissecting this election and going, oh my God, they stole it from us. I don't think he has it. I think Trump is out there for himself. And I think he's 100%. That being said, you need to show voter fraud in order for him to have a leg to stand on. If there is, let's say, hypothetically speaking, there is no voter fraud. He just loses the fair election. He's out of there. If he can prove voter fraud. Nah, bro. I think think he's been able to prove. prove, Listen, what has he been able to prove thus far? (laughs) Trump don't give a fuck. When will we realize this? He don't give a fuck. That man is moving to the beat of his own drum and he's looking at what Putin did, Putin, and he's looking at what the what's the president of your country name, Chris? Which one? I got a China, couple countries. China. I don't know how to pronounce it. Xi Jinping. Him. He's president for life. I'm telling you, if you think for one second that Donald Trump may not try to repeal the 22nd Amendment of the U.S. Constitution <laughs> and stay president, you're out of your mind. Honestly, I don't think he wants to be president no more. I think he's tired of this shit. Yeah, but I think I think he's afraid he'll go to prison if he's not. That's fair. That's interesting. And and low key, I think they will throw his ass in prison immediately. You said <laughs> you told me on this podcast that you said they would never put a president in jail yo. even after they left the White House. Yo. You said that. Yo. Yo, yo, uh, yo, 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 I said on this very podcast that they would throw him in jail. That's what I no, said. No, that's not what you said. Charlamagne. You said the exact opposite. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Didn't I say, Taylor, didn't I say that? Taylor. That's a goddamn lie. Nah, you sh- said that. Ow, Charlotte. Charlotte, he really did say it, though. Oh, shut up. Y'all not going to say that. I said, I said, I said, I said, they are putting him in jail the That's second that he wins. Said. And then you said this. You said something like, you know, not all MAGA people are bad. Like, we need to give them a better chance. And, and then, like, happened. we need that, to look at white a, women as the savior. A trading white women moment. can really save black men. <laughs> okay. And we need, to, we need to look at that, how they can come happened. to our aid and our help. You know, something about Michael Orr or whatever. All I'm telling y'all is, is <laughs> he's not playing when he posts things on Instagram where he's saying he's staying until 2048, bro. Trump ain't going nowhere. I'm telling you. He's 80 years old. He can't be here to know 2048, bro. He just needs to ride it out till he dies. That's all. Nah, bro. He's, He's not, not spending his good golden years dies. in prison. Exactly. You're not about to Weinstein Trump. Trump ain't spending his last days in jail. <laughs> <laughs> right? He also okay. he also thinks he can figure out a way to pass it off to one of his kids. I mean, that's that's yeah. also the strategy. He Yo, that's, care about that, his kids. I believe that 100%. I believe they're trying to create some legacy politicians. I believe that. And that obviously that's been done by the, you know, the Bushes. And I'm sure there's other people who've tried to do that as well. But yeah, it's definitely trying to do that. That's what happens when motherfuckers want power. They want to keep that shit. That's all it is, bro. Man, Choke, you hit it on the head. Bro. It's fucking power. Everybody wants power. Like nobody Yo, wants to do what's right. They want power. They want bro. power. And low key, that's why if you want to bring it to a different thing, it's like that's why uh, like Hollywood and all these other structures, you could talk Holly like corporate America, all these other places that preach diversity, but there's no diver- diversity in the corporate offices. There's no diversity on the executive boards. They don't care about diversity. They just want to hold the power between them and their friends. And they want to give the little token diversity things like, oh, here's an athlete of a different color. or Oh, here's a lead actor of a different color. The shit that they can interchange with a different movie or shit they can interchange with a different campaign, a different sneaker or whatever, they give to diversity. But the shit that can stays and consolidates the power, very rarely will they do that, ever. Same thing with politics. Everybody wants to just keep it to their little club. Everybody wants the power, yo. And let's not, I mean, listen, in both sides, Democrats yeah. and Republicans, 
Both want power. The only thing that you can ever hope for when somebody has power is that they have some fucking empathy. Yes. Like, like literally, that's it. Like, that's the, oh, yo, by the way, my people, everybody listening, the bare minimum you want from anybody that has power is that they have some empathy and they look out for the little motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That's, re- that's really it. Mm-hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. Did we ever do Ask an Idiot? What the fuck happened? No, oh, Taylor just... derailed us with the USPS question. <laughs> Let's do some Ask an Idiot, Taylor. Give us three real quick. Okay, hold on. All right. Um, well, speaking on Trump. Well, actually, I don't want to talk about Trump anymore. So, Marky underscore Galley wants to know, what was your most embarrassing moment in public and how did you pass it? Move past it. My most embarrassing moment in public? Mm-hmm. And how did I move past it? Mm-hmm. God, I don't know, man. I've had a lot of embarrassing moments, man. I don't know, Charlotte. What you got? Um, I don't know if I have any embarrassing public moments because I kind of fixed my brain not to be ashamed of certain things that happen publicly. I guess even when you know, when you are a public figure, like you know, you're getting talked about all the time and some of your that's why that's that's one and I, I think I've said this before. I don't know if I said this here or in one of my books, but that's one of the reasons I don't edit things out of interviews. Like when 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 Master P checks me in an interview or Fredro Star wiles out or Beanie Siegel calls me pussy, like none of that stuff is live. Mm. I could edit all that out, but I I don't care. I could I take the good with the bad. So mm. I, and and by the way, I don't believe in so-called good or bad. It's just all part of the process. So those things that I guess would be embarrassing to other people, I don't give a fuck about. Call me a pussy. I don't mm. care. Like, why do you, I, I've, survived, I've survived, and I'm still surviving. At, I'm happy to be here at 42 years old. Right. Being, being pussy has kept me alive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I was tough and, and pretending to be hard, that's when I had all those brushes with death yeah, yeah, in the street. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I don't care. I even, like, even when they punched me in the back of the head and front of the radio station and I took off running like that would be super embarrassing for a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? For me, I ain't give a fuck. I don't suffer from no digital depression. Digital depression is what I call when some shit like that happens to you, when you get your ass kicked on camera and right. the whole world sees it, especially imagine it's one thing when you get, cause we watch videos of people getting beat up all the time. Right. We don't even know those people. Imagine, imagine when some, you know. somebody, you know, that shit happens to you. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yo, I keep it the fuck moving. Like, yeah. you know, every now and then motherfuckers will yell out, can I get a drop or send me some shit on Twitter? Like, but I don't give a fuck. My life is great. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. I don't know when I'm embarrassed, but I don't know when, I really don't. I really, I'm not even saying that. I don't know when the last time I've been embarrassed publicly. I really don't. In my, in my, in the private moments when I've done things that I'm embarrassed by, you know, those things, I'm, 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 I hold myself accountable more than anybody else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people can say things to me and I'll brush it off, but you know, it's those things you keep telling yourself over and over that, 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 that really fuck with you. So I don't, yeah, publicly, I don't know anything that, um, that's embarrassing. Hmm. What else was that? Um, at still gammy wants to know if you two could switch lives for a day, what would be something you want to do in each other's lives? That you couldn't do in your own. Um, I'd like to, uh, yeah, I'd like to drink water by the bucket or whatever it is <laughs> that he drinks. That'd be really cool. If <laughs> I don't have to, I don't get to do that normally. Is just you know take a barrel to my head full of water. So that's what I would like to do. Is you, Charlemagne? Um, for me, it'd probably be stand up, and it would probably be. I would definitely go to a doctor to see what the fuck is wrong with my bowels because Andrew takes a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of shit. So I would have to see what the fuck is wrong with my bowels and I would get a wax. <laughs> get a wax? You like, always talk about how hairy your asshole is, bro. Oh, I so thought I'm, you meant like you'd still get wax. You get no. like, a, like a white version of wax. I get that. I get them cheeks. I get the okay, cheeks wax, baby. Fair enough. That shit feels great. And Andrew get back in his body. He have a nice smooth butt. He <laughs> <laughs> wants where all that hair went. <laughs> Give me another one, like Taylor. That's like the last smooth, one. Next but. question. Um, uh, the Kodak Chris wants to know, what's one weird habit you've picked up or noticed that you have since you've been stuck in the house? 
Oh, that's a good one, Charlotte. What you got, man? You've been in the house more than me. Um, is it a, you said bad habit or just it's a weird, weird habit, habit, a thing habit. that you've done since you, you were stuck in the house. Me. Oh, tree hugging, walking around <laughs> the backyard barefoot, tree hugging, baby. That's it. I mean, I, I'm not gonna call that weird, but that is definitely. Um, you do that how many times a week? A lot. I'm doing it as soon as I get the fuck off this goddamn Zoom. And when people come to my house, I'm like, "Yo, go hug the tree." Yep. It's just and one tree, I, and all of them do it. My homegirl Tiffany Williams was over here the other day. She did it. And you got to get barefoot. When you get barefoot and you put your feet in the ground and you get that grounding and you put your hands on that tree and you just say a prayer, I promise you it just, I don't know, the energy of it just shifts something in you, man. It feels I have heard really, that really about good. being barefoot. I have heard yeah, that. I, I have heard that barefoot. about being barefoot. Like there's something about being barefoot and like uh, connecting. Y'all don't wear no shoes at Burning Man. Why you think y'all got such a connection at Burning Man? We do. We got to wear the boots, bro. You need you have to wear boots. You don't have to do anything there, but I mean, you're gonna be filthy. It's gonna be sand everywhere. You got to throw some boots on, bro. Yo, I promise you, when they open that shit back up and go to Burning Man, walk around that sand with no shoes on. All right, bet I'm gonna try for you. It's the earth. Like it's a connection to the earth. It's like you're you're rooting yourself into. The ground, like yeah. it, it gives you a feeling of wholeness. I have heard that. I have heard that. No bullshit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Nah, the problem they, with they said us as human be beings, what'd you say, Alex? They said not to be barefoot, especially out there. Something in that sand, it like dries out your foot in a way where it could start like cracking your skin. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, I, One problem that we have as humans, we don't realize that we're already whole because we're connected to everything. Mm-hmm. We have to stop looking at ourselves as individuals and start looking at ourselves as something that's connected to this whole broader universe. When you look at a tree, you should see yourself. When you look up in the sky, you should see yourself. When you look at the sun, the moon, you should see yourself because you are a part of that. Human beings are a part of that. It's like every animal you see, every bug, everything is part of this universe. It's part of this ecosystem. We're all connected as one. And man, when you take your motherfucking shoes off and, you know, walk around in some goddamn grass and put your hands on some trees, you really feel a different type of fucking energy. Mm -hmm. You know, do it. Just check for ticks when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> shout to Chris, man. All right, y'all. Shout to shout to MC Lime. <laughs> okay, <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> MC Lime out this motherfucker. All right, uh, listen. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.